Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we have another playthrough for you. This time it is for a new release called Beyond the Sun. This one's published by Rio Grande Games and designed by Dennis K. Chan. It plays two to four players and it is a tech tree based space game uh, and is a new Essen release. So we're excited to play it on the channel. Yeah, so it's been a while since we played anything by Rio Grande Games, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, this is the big release of the year for them. Mm -hmm. yep. And it has a very interesting theme, and the mechanics are very... They're different from what we're used to playing. They are different, yeah. So we're really excited to show you this one. But before we get started, we would like to kindly please ask that you turn on your Klingon subtitles just in case we make any rules mistakes. And if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And without further ado, we are going to get started. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up for our two-player game of Beyond the Sun. As you can see, this is a massive board. It's really big. <laughs> We've had to zoom out quite a bit. Pretty much to the max. Yes. So we're going to try to insert a zoomed in a video clips mm -hmm. for your you know, ease of viewing. So viewing can, pleasure. Because we really yes. want you to understand this game. So interesting. But what we have here is the tech tree that Naveen was speaking of. Mm -hmm. This is the main juice of the game. This is pretty much what the game is built on. So we're going to be describing this in a second. But up here, we also have the exploration board. More which juice. Going to be, yeah, a little bit more juice. More juice, for sure. Yeah, baby juice. Oh, I don't know about baby. I, I There's some juice over there. You think? I'd say 50-50 juice. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. Okay. We also have our own player boards here that controls all of the different resources that are at play in this game. And then a few extra little cards, which we'll talk about in a second. So this game takes place about 200 years into the future. We have destroyed the Earth. I didn't do anything, but... <laughs> well, we, the collective well, we. Yeah. And now we are forced to go into space. Uh, one of the corporations has developed the first hyperspace spaceship, something like that. Space spaceship, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we have now entered the spacefaring era. So we're exploring space, looking for places to habitate, I guess. And we are discovering technologies along the way. And of course, as humans do, we are now different corporations who are vying for control and power. Competitive. Yes. So the game takes place over several rounds. Uh, there's not a set number of rounds. There's an end game condition that would trigger the end of the game. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The main concept of this game is there is this gigantic tech tree. At the start of the game, we only have four actions available to us. And they are all the way over here to the very left, the start of the tech tree. And so as the game progresses, we're going to be discovering new technologies, which are these cards right here, that'll mm -hmm. give us access to more different types of actions, more efficient actions that'll allow us to do bigger and better things. But in order to take the actions on this side of the board, we must first research the different technologies. Mm -hmm. So if you look closely at the board, you can kind of see from the basic spacefaring action, it splits into these four different sections. So from here, you can research any of these four technologies. If, say, for example, I were to research this technology, after that, I could then research anywhere where the line connects to. Mm -hmm. And that is how the tech tree works. There are four levels of technology. There's level one, which are these four over here, level two, level three, and then level four over here, which are the hardest to get to, obviously. Mm -hmm. In order for you to research a technology, you must have researched all of the technologies before it, which means if I want to research this space over here, I would need to have both this one and this one researched, mm -hmm. which also means I would need to have this one researched and these two. So it's kind of, it all kind of like um, branches into this big tree. It's like a family tree of technology. Yes. Yeah. And so whenever we refer to technology, technology cards are these types of cards that I was, that I was kind of displaying. And they all have different types of actions or immediate or ongoing benefits. And there are four main types. They're denoted by the colors, the four colors. The blue stands for scientific. The green is economic, red is military, and yellow is commercial. And so they will provide different types of actions or bonuses related to their type. Right. And I should also mention that there are two different types of player boards. There are the basic starting boards, which is the ones that we are playing with today. Yep. And there are also the advanced boards that are asymmetric. Mm -hmm. So just know that that exists. Yep. We're not playing with them today, but they do exist. And so a player's turn in this game consists of three different phases. The very first thing that you do on your turn is you take an action. And so actions in this game are, are symbolized by these like gray hexagons. Mm -hmm. And these are your player tokens, which you're going to be using to select an action. Like I was mentioning at the start of the game, these are the only four that are available to you. I'm just going to briefly dis describe what these four actions are so that'll help open up the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. Action spaces look like this. And so when you take an action, you place one of your action markers on one of those action spaces and then carry out the action. 
you must always move your marker to another available action space on your turn. But if an action has multiple spaces, you may move to the next one. So the very topmost action in the basic spacefaring menu is the ability to research a level one technology. So anytime you see this kind of symbol with a person and then either a one, two, three, or four, that is a researching action. It tells you specifically what level of technology that you're allowed to research. Mm -hmm. And so as you can see, there are only two of these available to start the game, which are researching a level one technology and researching a level two technology. So if I wanted to research a level three or four, I would have to find those actions right. somewhere on the board. Yep. Or I would have to choose, I guess I should say, those technologies that would give me that action type later on. And so what I would do if I wanted to research a technology is I would place my action token here on my turn. And then what I would do is I would place one of the people that are on my board and I would assign them to the technology that I'm trying to research. Which brings us to our player boards. So our player boards are divided into three or four distinct areas. Yeah, a couple sections, yep. Anything in the top left-hand corner here in this box is your population that is available to you. Population is one of the resource types in this game, mm -hmm. one of the main resource types. The other type is ore, and ore is more like a currency. This is what you spend to do certain actions, and all of the, the, the cost to do actions will be listed on the actual action type. And so anytime you see that kind of like person symbol on the action, that means you have to literally take one of these population cubes from your, from your available um, box here supply mm -hmm. and place it in that area we will talk about how to get more of these population cubes later on but that is how you spend them mm -hmm. so going back to this action if i wanted to research say this level one technology which is the narrow beam lasers um, in the military category i would take one of my popula population cubes i would put it here on the leftmost side of the box to show that now from now on i have access to this technology mm -hmm. and then i would gain whatever the immediate benefit of the card is at the very top here, a lot of them have immediate benefits, and I would just gain that immediately. And some of them also have an additional action spot uh, below it. And so that action is now available only to people who have researched this technology. And so in the case of the narrow beam lasers, I would immediately gain one ore, and then I would be able to upgrade a ship by one level. We haven't discussed the ships yet, but that is what this, let, this lets me do immediately. And then from now on, I have this available action spot that allows me to pay one ore in order to turn one of my population cubes into a level two ship and then jump three spaces. The next available space on this basic space fairy tile is the ability to research a level two technology. So the procedure for that is very similar. The differences are that uh, in order to research a level two technology, you have to pay two ore. So anytime there you see a symbol that's like to the left of a colon, mm -hmm. that is something that you have to pay. Say I had researched this level one technology previously, I am now eligible to research this or this level two technology because of the way that the, uh, the lines connect. And so the difference between researching a level two and three technology versus level one is they each have these event cards on them. And so what I would do is first things first, I would place my population cube to the left of whichever technology I'm going to be discovering. And then I would read the event card aloud. And so the event cards uh, do things immediately or they might uh, provide a bonus or some, something new. It's just some, something that you weren't expecting to happen will right. happen. Right. And so all of these event cards we will read as we play the game because there is a wide variety of things that can happen with these cards. But that is the first thing that happens. You read and resolve this card. Then you actually discover the technology. And so the way that that works is there is a stack of these technology cards, depending on the levels. So these are all the level twos, these are level threes, level fours. And so what you would have to do is first look at the technology card that came before it. So in this example, it's this red military one. And so now I must look through this deck for military specific um, technology cards. Because in the future, sometimes it might be connected to more than one of the technologies. So if there are multiple colors, then you must first choose which type of technology that you want to research. Mm. So in this example, it's red. What I would do is I would take the entire stack of technology cards and I would flip them over until I find two cards that have red showing in some kind of capacity. So. So this is a good example, this is the first one, and it has to be red on the left-hand side mm -hmm. because you're going from red to red. This is a hybrid technology, meaning it encompasses uh, more than one color, but it still works because it still has red in it. Mm -hmm. So this is the outer sector militia, I would put that aside, and I would keep flipping until I find two of them 
that have red on them. So I found the two. I found Outer Sector Militia and Human Experiments. And then what I would do is I would read them both and I get to decide which of the two is going to become the, t the technology that gets placed here. Right. And if the technology has an immediate benefit, I would gain it right away, just like the other technology cards. And same thing, now I would have access to these uh, two types of, of new actions. Mm -hmm. And then the card that I did not choose will go to the bottom of the deck. This deck does not get shuffled so that you're continuously kind of going through the deck yep. and uh, you don't really have much of a risk of seeing something you've already seen. So in terms of talking about this research, even though Monique has been the one that would technically have unlocked this, this does not mean that I can now utilize these spaces. I must go through the same procedure and protocols of researching the same technology and then eventually researching into here to have access to these spots. Exactly. The benefit that I had in going there first is I got to choose which technology is going to go there. And so that is sort of like the beauty of the game. Mm -hmm. You decide on the fly what the rest of the game is going to look like. And so every time you play this game, it's going to have a different combination of things that happens yep. and different tools to your at your disposal, essentially. And so that is how discovering a technology works. Like I was mentioning earlier, there is no space here in order for you to discover the level threes or fours, you must find them by discovering these other level two technologies mm -hmm. and choosing that specific action spot. If nobody chooses them, there are also these guilds that will get unlocked eventually, which will give everybody the ability to do those types of actions. Which may get unlocked, potentially. They, they, they don't there's a high to. likelihood yes. of them getting unlocked. Right. I'm going to take a break from this side of the board real quick in order to discuss the exploration board, because that is what the next two actions um, have to do with. So the third action type and under basic spacefaring is the ability to convert one population into a level one spaceship optionally, that's an optional action. Mm -hmm. And then you jump to, that is a main action here, jumping two spaces on this exploration board. This is a big area control board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what we're trying to do here is we're trying to colonize these different uh, systems that actually exist in our planetary system. I believe I all of the cards uh, that these are based off of are real stars and, and different uh, They're real star systems planets. that you can see from Earth. Right. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. We both start the game with these level one ships here in Seoul. Um, one of the player boards, I believe the one that Naveen is playing with, gets to start with an additional ship. But basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be building these ships and jumping around, trying to take control over these, uh, these systems. So going back to this action, the first thing that it allows you to do is it allows you to build a level one spaceship. Whenever you build spaceships, it's the same thing. You must have population in your um, available space here yep. in order to build a spaceship because you're going to convert that die into that spaceship. And while we're on the topic of the dice, I just kind of want to go over. Each die is identical. The different faces are this supply box, which is what is showing all over the entire player board, essentially. Mm -hmm. And the supply box is kind of like the general symbol for supplies that you use in order to make population or in order to build spaceships. Right. It's just kind of like a neutral symbol. It's I guess. a neutral symbol, yeah. When it's when it's in this little kind of cell tower looking thing right over here, that that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's considered it just, supply. It's supply. Uh, when you turn it into a population, which we'll talk about later, then it turns into this person side, which yep. then goes there or onto the, the research board or whatever wherever else. You'll never be rolling dice in this game. You'll always be setting dice. Yes. Yeah. And whenever you turn uh, the die into a spaceship, then you would flip it to the face of whatever level the spaceship is going to be. So in this situation, we are turning a population cube into a level one spaceship. So I flip it to that side. And whenever you build a new spaceship, you must build it either in Seoul, which is where we're starting here, or into any shipyard systems that you control. So on this side of the board, because this is also for a two-player only game, mm -hmm. there's an op opposite side of the board that has a little bit more stuff going on. But on this side of the board, there are only two shipyard systems that you can ever be building ships into. And it is Seoul and this one up here, this uppermost. Players can always build spaceships into Seoul, but they can only deploy a spaceship into the, this shipyard system if they have control over it. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? And so what happens here is after I build that spaceship, taking this action, I can jump two spaces. So jumping on this board allows you to move from one place to another across one of these lines. Mm -hmm. And you can split up movement between the, the various spaceships that you control on the board. So if I'm allowed to jump two spaces, I can say, okay, I'm gonna move both of these spaceships to that, to that card. So it's one, two. When I end my movement, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look to see if I gain control. All you have to do to have control is you have to have the highest sum of the levels of your ships in that area. Considered military power. 
Yes, it's considered military power. So in this example, I have two level one spaceships. So my military power is, is two, two in this system. Because I'm unopposed, I technically have the highest amount of power in there. And so mm -hmm. I take control. Whenever you take control, you move one of these two discs from your player board onto the card itself, and it's called an outpost. And so each controllable system shows you what type of token that you have to put on here as an outpost. Some of them only have one. So in this example, this GJ1061 system requires the OR, which is the gear symbol, to be placed on here. And some of them have both symbols, like this uh, Ross 154. And in the case of, of the, the cards that have both symbols, you get to choose which one goes onto the card. What that'll actually do for you is it'll establish that you have an outpost on the board. Right. And it'll also help in production, which is the second phase of your turn, which we'll get to in a second. And then at the very top of some of these cards, not all, but at the very top of them, if there's a symbol that shows this kind of like disc with an arrow pointing down, that is a, an immediate benefit that you get for placing an outpost on that card, yes. for otherwise known as establishing control. This is a right? use it or lose it moment. Yes. And so that, that benefit can happen multiple times because if Naveen were to now come into this system on his next turn, he can take control by having a military power that's higher than mine. Right. He has to beat mine. So let's say I had a level four ship and I used a jump to get in here. Now my four beats her too. Her ships will stay there, but she will now lose control of this token. It'll go back to her player board. And then I would then place out my control token right over here. And then he will now get to take that benefit, that sweet, sweet benefit yep. that I had just taken on my turn. And all of the benefits um, are very different. Some of them allow you to build more ships. Some of them allow you to get resources. It really just depends on the card. The card, yeah. I should also mention that this shipyard system at the very top here is also controllable. You can go there, and if you have the most power, then you can take control by placing your outpost on there. But the difference between the, this system and these cards is these cards are colonizable, mm -hmm. which means you can just colonize the card, take it as your own, and those are going to be your end game points for the end of the game. Right. And they also have these like really, really nice colonization benefits yeah. that, Col that vary from card to card. Yeah, and colonization is, is a specific action on the board, which we'll talk about. Yes. So in this example, for GJ1061, um, at the very bottom left-hand corner of the card, there is the colonization symbol. It'll have a number. And that is the minimum military power that you are required to have in order to colonize this card. Right. But in order to colonize the card, you have to have a tech card available to you that has that action on it. Yep. So at the start of the game, it's only going to be this yellow um, level one tech card called terraforming. So if Naveen wants to colonize that card, he needs to research this tech mm -hmm. technology card first. Right. And then on one of his turns, take literally this bottom action spot that allows him to pay three ore, he must sacrifice a population from his board, and then he can colonize it. And so what colonizing uh, the card does is it allows him to take the card. Uh, any ship that he used up to the um, minimum pow military power gets returned to his board. Right. So that is a nice way of kind of balancing things. But now this token is on this card for the rest of the game. Permanently, yep. And in addition, he not only gets the, the points at the bottom left-hand corner of the card at the end of the game, and whatever the benefit's showing at the bottom here, and so in this example for GJ1061, the benefit for colonizing is he gets to take one of the supply cubes from his board and build a level three spaceship out of it and put it straight into deep space. Yes. So that's a pretty nice, that's a pretty nice benefit. And then what he gets to do is he gets to place a second one of these tokens from his board onto the card. And so that's that's a really nice power because that stays there for the rest of the game. Unlike the regular outposts on the board, which can change hands depending mm -hmm. on whoever takes control of the card next. Yeah, this is that, locked that's in. That's locked in. And we haven't talked about the significance of removing these tokens on the board, but we're about to get to that yeah, soon. Yeah, we will in a second. And that is the exploration board. The very last type of action on the basic spacefaring menu here is the ability to turn one supply from your board. And whenever you do this, you always take from the leftmost column, A, which is the most abundant in supply anyway, yep. and you turn it into a population. So this is an action that you want to take if it's like I'm really out of population, I need to make more somehow, yep. then you can do it by taking that action. And it also gives you one ore. So just a way of getting one population and one ore if you're in dire need. The two baseline resources in mm -hmm. the game, yeah. 
So we discussed the technology board here, we discussed the exploration board, and so now we're gonna deep dive a little bit more into our player boards. Right. So after you're done taking your action, the second phase of your turn is production. And so that is where all of those little discs that we were talking about come into play. Yes. So on your player board, there are three different ways that you can produce. You have to choose one of them. Mm -hmm. And so the three different production types are producing population, producing ore, or just trading resources. And so if you haven't noticed, you're producing the same two resources that we've been talking about. And so the way that production works is say I want to produce a, a population. I need more people in order to, you know, dispense out to onto the board. To do more stuff. And so you would look at the different symbols that are, are visible on your board and you would take one supply cube from each of those visible columns and turn them into population. So in this example, I have A and B showing. I would take one supply cube from each column and place them into my um, my available space here to now you know be able to deploy. And so that is why um, colonizing these systems are also really valuable because these tokens will stay there permanently. If you're constantly exchanging hands, these tokens get returned to your board. And so when I go to produce, I have less ability to produce resources. Right. And so what also happens here is whenever you research a technology, you're putting a population cube next to the technology and it's going to stay there for the rest of the game, mm -hmm. which means as the game progresses, these columns are going to get depleted. So if I don't have any more cubes in my A column and all I have is this A symbol showing, I don't actually get to produce population. The other thing that you can produce if you don't want to produce population is you can produce ore and it works the exact same way. You just look at the number of available symbols showing on your player board and then you just get that many pieces of ore from the supply. Right. So it's a little bit different from the population in that it's not dependent on the Columns. exchange of yeah. resources that you have up here. Mm -hmm. You can always just get that much from the supply. Right. The third type of way you can produce is kind of like a an act of desperation, I would say. Yeah, in, in our plays in the past, we haven't really used it. Mm -hmm. But it is available if you need it. And that is resource trading. And so there are three different things that you can do and you can repeat them in any combination. Right. Spend three ore in order to convert one supply cube into a population, or you can spend one ore to convert one of your ships from anywhere on the exploration board into a population. So you're, you're going backwards on mm -hmm. that, that ship. Or if you really want to, you can just sacrifice an available population from your board by putting it back into the rightmost supply column on your board and then gain one ore from the supply. It's like you're turning a human into a fossil. <laughs> Is what I would say. I guess. Something like that. <laughs> and so that is essentially how your player board works. There is one more way of getting these uh, tokens off your board in a very permanent way, mm -hmm. and that is by ways of automation. And so automation is another type of immediate benefit. Of immediate benefit that is mm -hmm. available to you as one of the level one technologies. But say, for example, uh, under this advanced genetics technology, if I were to research this, I would immediately get to automate one food token and then turn one supply cube into a population. And so what automating does is it allows you to take the token from your player board and place it at the automation track that's all the way at the top here. All that means is now that token is off your board forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is now there for the rest of the game. There's no way to, to remove these from your automation track. Which is good. Which is good. It's this good. is a great you thing. You want that. In addition, depending on how far you've gotten on this track, some of these spots are worth points. I believe it's starting from the second spot onwards is yep. worth one point. The final spot is worth two points and these are cumulative. And so if you ever automate past seven spots, then each, each additional automation is just worth one point per token. Right. We basically explained all the different types of, of actions in this game. Mm -hmm. As we develop and research the, the future te technologies, they're gonna be very much the same types of actions. But kind just of, sweeter. Yeah, yeah, represented in different ways. Right. Uh, the final thing are the achievements. And the achievements are actually the third phase of your turn. Mm -hmm. Once you finish taking your one action, you've chosen which way do you want it to produce, then you check to see if you've achieved any of these achievements. Those four achievements. There, there are always four cards in play. Two of them are always in every game yep. and the other two are variable. And so these achievements are gonna be things like colonizing four different systems or researching your first level four technology. Those are the two that are always in play. Mm -hmm. And so once you get to that third phase, you must check to see if you've accomplished any of these. And if you've met one of the achievements, then you're required to put one of your achievement discs onto that card. 
you can only do each achievement once, once. per game. Yep. And if you meet the requirements of several of these achievement cards on your turn, you can still only do one achievement per turn. Right. Because the achievement cards are the timer of the game. Yes. So I believe in higher player counts, you have to have four achievements in order to end the game. In a two player game, it's only three. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we have three discs, it's not three per person, just three discs total amongst all of these achievement cards, then that is going to trigger the last round of the game. Right. You finish the round, so that everybody has equal number of turns, and then you take one more full round of actions, essentially. Yep. And then the game will end, and you go into end game scoring. And so end game scoring is is pretty straightforward. You get points for all of the technologies that you've researched. You mm -hmm. get points for all of your cards that you've colonized. Mm -hmm. Points for your achievements. You have points for your automation cards. Sometimes the events will have uh, certain points yes. on them. Yes, and sometimes you'll be able to have like a private technology, but that's highly variable depending right. on the game. And you also get points for any of the uh, outposts that you have left on this board, as well as whoever controls the two non-controllable <laughs> areas. Yes, exactly. And whoever has the most points wins. So I know that that was kind of like a scattered teach, mm -hmm. but it is kind of a, it's a different game. So I hope that made a little bit of sense. It'll be smooth as we play. Yes. It'll definitely become more apparent as to what's going on. Turns are very quick, um, mm -hmm. and you'll probably catch on to how the game works like after the first few turns. I would say so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are going to get set up, and then we are going to start our playthrough. Okay, so we have reset the board. Not too much resetting, but we are ready to play our game. There is some starting setup, and we're going to go over it right now. Yes, so we play as uh, two different corporations. Do you want to introduce who you are? Yeah, I am the uh, Zheng Yi Brotherhood, and the, so these are asymmetric corporations. And so mine, for flavor text, is... Representing justice for the masses, this underground socialist organization is hailed by many of the working class, the oppressed, as well as anonymous groups conducting cyber military research. Wow. wow. For the people. And you? I am the Nishida Ostergaard Corporation. And so it says, this small aerospace startup turned into a global sensation overnight as they unveiled the first commercially viable hyperspace, hyperspace engine. Oh, yeah. We are the ones who made the hyperspace engine. Oh, nice. It is now a multi-trillion dollar conglomerate. Wow. Wow. So uh, the asymmetry in these boards is just really slight. It's just slight. In, in starting setup. So Naveen yes. gets... So everybody starts with two population, one ore. And then for me, it's after regular setup, which is what we have here. Gain an additional level one ship on Seoul, taken from supply column A, which is right here. So Naveen is a little bit uh, more stacked. So I have two ships. The... Exploration to board your to start. One ship. And so you? for me, it says after regular setup, I gain two additional ore. So I'm going to start the game with three ore total. And so the amount of ore that you start with depends on player count mm -hmm. um, in a, and player order. Sorry. In a two player game, we both just start with one. One. Yep. So we are going to see who goes first. And I think we should do a different. Uh, I don't think rock, paper, scissors is going to fly. We need I always to do... go scissors, huh? Yeah, because we, we notice that we keep using the same. Uh, I always win. <laughs> I always go first. You win in board so games too. Let's do uh, okay. evens and odds. Evens and odds. Okay, what do you want to be? Evens. Okay. Three, two, one, shoot. Okay, okay so... so it's you. Odd. Okay. Well, so Naveen is going to get this start player marker, and oh, it's I not have... going to change hands. It's I don't just... like being a start player. Because I get the. Yeah, you get the extra potential, extra round. Potential. Yeah. Potential. Okay. Well, here right. we go. Where are you going to go? So I, I have nothing going for me in technology, so I'm going to go and. Start some technology. <laughs> I'm going to go over here to the basic spacefaring, the first option we have right over here. And I'm going to go ahead and research one of these four technologies. All right, so I'm going to do the military upgrade over here. So it's going to cost me one of my population. That's going to go over here, denoting that I have researched this technology right here. So this is narrow beam laser. What it says here in the small print is immediately I'm going to gain one ore and upgrade one of my ships by one level. So this one becomes now a two. Nice. Here we go. Wow. That's... I'm not feeling too good uh, in space over here. So far, so good. All right. And so now uh, the second thing I do after I take my action is I do production. So I'm going to go ahead and produce uh, more population. So I'm going to take from this column A because that's what's uncovered and then go ahead and turn it into a human. There we go. So now I have a two, two balance between my resources. And then technically he's supposed to check to see if he has met the achievements, but it is so early in the game. Yeah. I promise you, he Speak, hasn't. Speaking of the achievements, we should probably talk about what they are. Ah, yes. Yeah. All right. So we have the two uh, achievements that, that have to be in every game, and yep. that's Empire, which is to colonize four systems. 
and Transcendence, which is to research your first uh, level four technology. Mm -hmm. In this game, we're also playing with the technologist and the posthumanist. So the technologist, you achieve this if you research all six of the level two technologies. Yep, so have one of these in each one of those spaces. Yes, and only one, per in a two player game, only one person can do this. And it's yep. gonna be worth three points. This is only open in a four player game. Sure. The posthumanist says if you have two or fewer of your, these supply cubes left in your supply at the end of your turn, then you take that only spot, which means you you have, would have had to like research or Quite you know, a bit. your cubes must be out. Yeah, get them out. Like a ton of ships. So, wow, interesting. Yeah, interesting okay. little thing. So, okay, it's your turn. I'm going to put these babies on. Oh, okay. Well, Can't see. There they are. Oh, and also on that note, we should also probably talk about these, these systems. Yep. So we have a starting system for the A space, and it is serious. Nice. If you place an outpost on here, you gain one ore immediately. The, it only takes uh, three military to colonize it. It gives you five points and lets you upgrade up to two different ships by one level. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, for the B areas, we have Wise 1541-2250. <laughs> There's no benefit for controlling this system, but once you colonize it with a, a military level five or higher, you get two points at the end of the game, and it lets you draw the top card from the uh, level three technology deck as your private technology. Mm. That's interesting. How cool. We that have cool. not experienced private technologies yet. So, uh, And then the third one is Ross 154. And so when you uh, control this system, you get to move your rightmost supply cube to supply column A. So that's a nice way to get that extra person there if yeah. you run out of that column. Because the only way to tap into this E column over here is if you've unlocked all these tokens and then when you produce this is showing then you can take that so it's yeah. a good way to move more resources closer to what you can probably yeah. produce you always spend uh, resources from the left, left column to the right right and so if you colonize this system you get to uh it says from now on you may pay an extra or to take an action that is occupied oh, wow nice wow i like that and that gets you six points at the end of the game interesting Ooh, now i don't like <laughs> that you have so many ships in there um say. Hmm. okay i'm gonna do the same okay I'm going to... So you have one in four choices. Yeah, I'm going to research a level one technology, but I think I'm going to start with the yellow one, which is terraforming. Okay. So for terraforming, it immediately lets me create a spaceship using a supply cube, so level one spaceship. But instead of uh, placing the spaceship in Seoul, it, it says, says to, in deep space. Yeah, it's put in deep space, which is nice because now I have easy access to the the B the B systems. Very nice. And then I'm going to produce. So I have a lot of ore. I think I will just produce uh, population. So I take the topmost cube from the A column, and there you go. I got my person. Very nice. So back to you. And also for this terraforming card, I also now have these additional action spaces that allows me to just jump four, which is just make four movements here, or I can colonize a system for three or and sacrificing a person. So that's cool. That's the first uh, colonizing action mm -hmm. so far. So because we're both blocked off here, there's no way I can take the same action that we just did. I must move somewhere else. So I do have this space here, which is Pay an ore and then convert one of my population into a level two ship, and that two level two ship would have to end up on Seoul. Um, and then I can do a, a triple jump. So that's awesome. That's that's a good one right there. I think I will do it. You do <laughs> so it? I'm gonna go there, yeah. So I'm gonna pay an ore. There you go. Okay. And then I am gonna turn one of my population into a level two ship. Where are you? Level two. Okay. And then that's gonna go on to Seoul. And then now wow. I get to jump. Uh, up to three. So I'm going to go one, two, three. They're all going to just hang out here on this card. Oh, so Naveen has a military power of five because he has two level twos and one level one. Mm -hmm. So you definitely have enough military power to colonize yeah. this. Uh... This one requires only three military power, but I don't have this technology unlocked yet. That's something I have to do. Uh, but because I control that territory over there, I get to put my token right there. And it has to be the gear one because that is the symbol on that card. Right. Some of these cards, like this one, have two symbols you get to choose. This particular one must be that one. So now he gets this um, outpost bonus at the top here, which lets him gain one ore. Nice. Nice. Okay, I'll take it. That is a great, uh, that's a great col colonization benefit if you yeah. can unlock that action. Right. All right. So what are you going to produce? Um, I'm going to go ahead and produce, I think I'm going to produce people. 
Okay. Yeah, let's do people. So you get a population. I do. So I'm going to take it from the A because that's the one spot that's available. And so now I have a 2 2 split. Done? Mm hmm. Okay, I'm feeling like Naveen needs to be left alone in this area for a second. So I'm going to work on um, researching technology. I'm going to take the second action. Second action? Okay. So that will um, allow me to research a level two technology since I'm already here in mm -hmm. this level one. And so because I have this technology research, this allows me to research this level two technology. Only that one right now. Yeah, only this one. And the reason why is because this level two technology requires both of these level ones. Mm -hmm. That's where this kind of comes yeah, from. Yeah, the word both is also listed there. Yeah. Some of these it says two of three because three things will filter in. But in this particular case, both. Yes. So, uh, which means I have to do this one. Yep. So and two ore. So first I spend two ore. Yep. And then I place it's one of my little, people right, right here. Right there. Just like in the level ones. And then we resolve this event. Okay, what do you got? Okay. So this is experimental prototypes. Each faction picks up the leftmost supply cube and rolls it like a die. <laughs> oh, I said there's no die rolling in this game. Nice. You did. Yeah, we've never seen this. I've never before, seen this card, so. yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll go first. And depending on whatever the die face shows, you get to do a thing. Wow. Sweet. This is fun. Tell okay. me more. Uh, it's a level four ship. So there are three options. If you roll a level one ship or a population, then you gain a population. Okay. If you roll any other valued ship, which is what I did, then I place this ship on Seoul as a level two as ship. As a level two. Nice. Oh, nice. I got a ship. And then the last one is if you just rolled it and it pulled up as a supply, supply. you just place it back and you gain two ore. Ah. So go ahead and roll yours. Okay, good luck to me. Okay, it's a level one ship. You gain one population. So this one becomes one population. Yes. Okay. Oh, that was nice. We both kind of benefited from that. That's got a little something. And so this event is now out of the game. Yep. And now you'll actually show us the technology. Yes. And so because the previous technology uh, was a, a yellow one, I have to choose, I have to find a yellow technology. Yeah. So she just draws until she sees yellow. Did we shuffle these? Uh, go for it. Yep. Okay. So I draw until I see yellow. So there's one so yellow. There's one yellow. Two yellows. That's another. Yep. Had she drawn and there was no yellows, those would go literally under the deck. They don't mm -hmm. get, they don't get discarded. They don't get shuffled back in. They go at the very bottom. All right. Okay, so my two options are Supply Outpost. This would immediately give me a, a an upgrade of one of my ships that are on the board by one level, and then I can jump twice. That's cool. That's not bad. And then it provides an additional action spot that says I can... Convert a Supply Cube into a Into population. a population. And upgrade one ship by one level, then jump one. Wow, that's <laughs> a fun spot. The second card is a modular fleet, mm. and this says I can build up to three different ships depending on how much ore oh, wow. I pay. Uh, I'm going to go with the supply outpost. Okay. That was too good. So when she doesn't, choose, goes at the bottom. Yep. That's not to be seen for a long time. And then I get to do this, you, the immediate benefit, immediately. So, so they can upgrade one of my ships by one level and then jump twice. So I'm going to upgrade this ship to a level two. Okay. And then I can jump twice. So I'm going to jump once. Okay. Into here, which is Naveen's territory. Five to two. And then I'm going to go this way. It doesn't give me an immediate benefit, but I like that. <laughs> I really like that colonization benefit. Okay. So I'm going to stay there. Go ahead and place your uh, control token on there. Oh, yes. I'm going to place the food, the food, uh, only food, the food is allowed there. Because so, yep. that's the only one that's allowed. Good. Uh, all right. And then I'm going to now produce. So I think I will produce peop uh, population. Population. Okay. So. Just this. Now it's back to you. Humanoid. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go back to researching a basic research right here, a level one. I'm going to research the one that Monique had done earlier. Mm. So uh, what that's going to cost me is one population, and that's going to go right over here. And I get the immediate benefit. So I turn one of my supply into a ship in deep space, a so level one out here. And then now I get to produce. I'm going to go ahead and produce one ore. Yeah, he, you technically can't produce people. I cannot produce people because this column is completely empty. So yeah. I need to get that moving. <laughs> yeah. So because that was an immediate effect and it didn't say optional, he actually has to do it. Right. So that forced him to empty that, that A column, even if it wasn't ideal for production. Anything that's not that doesn't specifically say optional, you have to do. It is what it is. Pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. All right. That's me. So... What are we gonna do here? All right, I'm gonna take the same action that you took. I'm gonna, I'm gonna research a level one technology. Uh, I need to get myself cat. on the board a little bit more. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna research uh, this one, the red really? one, the narrow beam lasers. So now we're, we're head to head here. <laughs> yeah. uh, and mm. this is gonna immediately let me gain one ore. Nice. And then I can upgrade one ship by one level. So. Are you turning that two into a three up there? This one, yes. Yeah. This is going into a three. Yes. 
and yeah, that's it. How much does that require up there in that five, five. right? Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. What production will you do? I'm going to produce uh, people population because okay. this is my last supply cube. And so I figured it would get emptied on my next turn anyway. Mm -hmm. So I might as well use it. Solid. Back to All you. right, back to me. So now, so because on the previous turn, I was able to unlock this technology that's terraforming, I'm going to take the action, this bottom action that's on there. So let's go ahead and do this one. It's going to cost me three ore in one of my population. That's to colonize this system right over here. So I'm going to pay my three ore. Okay. That goes to you. Okay. Uh, it's going to cost me one of these. So that's going to refill my supply here, which is kind of a good thing. Yeah. So it's going to go there. That's good. And then now I colonize that one. So so it costs, uh, it, it takes three military to colonize and you have five. So because yep. he has more than what's needed, he can kick the excess into deep space. Yep. Is that what you want to do? I'm going to kick the two excess into deep space. Okay, because optionally he can take back all of them if he'd like. I'd prefer to So these out. two you must return to your supply. Which is perfect because I need stuff in my supply. I also get kicked out into deep space yes. because now Naveen is going to take this card. And there's um, a benefit on the bottom. Yep, it says you can upgrade up to two ships by one level. So my two will turn into a three and my one will turn into a two. Or you can just turn that one into a three. There you go. So because I took that, the added bonus is I get to put another one of these tokens uh, onto this card right, right here. So it has to be the gear, right? It has to be the gear because it's this one right over here. So I'm gonna put another gear. So now that's permanently unlocked my production of coal. I'm sorry, ore uh, <laughs> like this. Ah, coal. Whoa. Yeah, so easy. Suddenly we introduced uh, coal into the system. Okay. So now we think that probably ruined the planet, maybe, you know? Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. So now we replace uh, this A system with another one from the A deck. And this is Groom Bridge 34. So the benefit for placing an outpost on here is you may spend two ore to turn one population into a level two ship. Mm. Uh, it takes four, four military to colonize and the rewards are five points at the end of the game. Nice. And this allows you to jump three. You may not enter the newly drawn system cards. So when you spend those jumps, you're uh, entering the other, other systems. Gotcha. All right. Wow. Good yeah, job. Thank so you. now you get to produce. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and produce population. So I'm, I'm oreless, but I'll take population. Just one. That's all I get. Okay, that's me. All right. So back to me. Okay, I am going to take this action. Okay. I thought that action was awesome. So, so yeah, let's I'll, do it. I'll move you here for you. So this is the pay one ore to convert one of your population into a level two ship. Mm -hmm. And then you have the ability to jump up to three times. Actually, I'm going to take that back. Not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do that. Okay. So let's um let's do let's discover a level two technology. Level two technology. Let's I'm do it. You're gonna go there. Yes. Okay. So two or two or wow. oops. Spend the two or and then uh the only one you're eligible for is this one because they feed in. Well, I can love I can discover this one too. Um yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. So that would be a red, a red one. Because if you if you research this one, then you have access to this level three. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. Yeah. <laughs> so I shouldn't have said. Um, I paid my ore. I'm gonna place this population right there, and I'm gonna read this event card. So, march of progress. Okay. Choose a level one technology. Starting with you, each faction who has not researched it may research it now with a supply cube. Ah. Excellent. So annoyed. I wish there was a level one technology that. Um, wow. You were on and. <laughs> <laughs> Because it still gives you a benefit. Any faction that already researched it may choose one of the following instead. Uh, but literally, any of the ones that I choose, you're not you're not going to be on it, so you mm -hmm. can join it with me. Right. So, which one do you want? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I'm going to research this one. Okay. Advanced genetics. So go for it. You so, go first. Oh, I, I, you use a supply cube, actually. You mm -hmm. don't use your available population. Yep. So this turns into a population, and this lets me automate. So the green... The green uh, technologies are economic. They allow you to automate the food tokens. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm going to automate my leftmost uh, food token. And so that opens up a, an extra Yep, when you produce for me. the population. Yep. Population and then uh, in addition, you also get to convert a supply cube into a population. It's nice, solid. So Naveen, are you going to research that yes, technology? Yes, I will do it. So I take it because of that event. This is only happening because of the event. Yes. Uh, I take it from this supply cube right here, always with from the leftmost. That's going to turn into a human over here. So now I have a freebie one like that. And at the same exact thing, I get the same benefit she did. I'm going to unlock this one over here into automation. And then I'm going to turn this one into another population. All right. That is me. And that is your turn. Yeah. So that was technology. actually just the event that that was uh, sitting here because I'm still researching this level two technology. So 
uh, I have a choice now because the the previous level one technologies were both this one and and the yellow one. I can choose yellow or red, but I have to make that decision now. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to choose red. red. I would like a, a red level two technology. So here we go. So and nothing. it's only the leftmost side of the card. So there's so this one. Is one. Nope. We have green and yellow. Here That's we right. go. Yellow and red. So all three of those go to the bottom. Yep. All these are going to go at the bottom. We're not going to shuffle that. And then I can choose between these two. What do you got? So the first one is the Terra Nova Cruisers. Mm. And this just gives me um, an additional action space that lets me pay four ore plus sacrifice one of my population in order to colonize. But uh, the power requirement is lowered by one. Okay, so. so like that one out there says five. If you had this technology, took this action, you'd pay four ore, kick out a population back to your supply, mm -hmm. and then have to pay one less. So this five would then cost her technically four. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is actually more expensive than going here, <laughs> it but is. it does lower the power requirement. Yep. So uh, the other option are the Android destroyers. And so this gives me an immediate benefit of creating a level three ship from a supply cube, from my rightmost supply cube, actually. And then it gives me an, an action spot that lets me pay a specific number of ore equal to whatever my highest technology that I level I've reached. So that would be two in order to turn one supply cube into a level two ship. Um, hmm. I'm going to go with Android Destroyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. So that's going to allow me to convert my rightmost supply cube, which is from column E, and create a level three ship. I have a level three ship, and this is going to go into Seoul. So now I'm going to produce, and I have a lot of people, but I don't have a good multiplier on ore. I got to take ore. It's just only, it's only one ore, but it's something. Back to you. Very nice. Okay. All right. Seeing that I don't have any ore, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and, and do the last uh, technology research over here, which is advanced robotics. So it's going to cost me one of my population. It's going to go over here, signifying that I've done that. And remember, at the very end of the game, each one of these in the first uh, column is 1 point, 2 point, 3 point, and then variable out here. Uh, so what this is going to allow me to do immediately is automate one of these gears. So that's going to go here. That's another victory point tactic at the end of the game. And it gets me kind of moving down this line right here. And also what it does is give me one ore. Okay. And that All is right. me there. And then what I will do is for my, um, my production, I am going to take the ore because my only symbol over here is this one. And that's completely colored off. I need to get rid of this in order to take care of those. So now I am... There, and I have not done any achievements. That's me. <laughs> you know, I made a big mistake. This, I'm not purple. I was, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm this one. I didn't even catch that. That's me. That's you. That's me. That's important because it, it opens up that spot. It that does. I'm probably not going to take. Which you can't do yet, no. but it is important though. Yeah, right, that was a big boo-boo. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to go here to the narrow beam lasers. You mind moving Yeah, you got it. Thank so you. the immediate action's done. Once you get it that one time, it's over. It's now just about the spots here. Yes. So I can spend one ore okay. to convert a population into a level two ship, which is going to go into Seoul, and then I can jump three. Mm. So um, let's get this ship into here for one. That's the five you need. Yeah. Yes. And then we might as well just go two, ooh, three. Really? You're going to overpay. I just don't want you coming in and swooping. That's the fear. Go over there. I might go there. <laughs> okay. Um... Actually, fine, you're right. I'm going to do this one instead. Yep, nice. Because if she paid five, there's I would no have to take. Yeah. yeah, there's no there's no change. If I were to colonize this uh, system, I would have to take both dice back. Mm -hmm. So you might as well pay an exact change. Uh, so the outpost bonus here is I can spend two ore to convert one of my population to a level two ship. I don't have any more ore. So use it or lose it. So you lose it. That's it. All right, and since I now control this system, I'm gonna place this gear token over here. Solid. I have to sacrifice that outpost bonus because I don't have any more ore, mm -hmm. but uh, I will produce <laughs> what I want to produce. It has to be ore because you have nothing in the supply. No, I have this one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I could yeah, produce sorry. one person by going there, but uh, I think it will be ore. Okay, just to balance. So, yeah, taking an ore, back to you. Yeah, so I'm going to do a level two technology here. Okay. So it's going to cost me two ore. So here's two ore. Thank you. And I'm going to research one that Monique has already researched. It's going to be this one over here. So I have the ability to do this because I have researched back here, terraforming, into this section here. And so I'm going to pay one population, which is that, plus a two ore. 
And then what it immediately lets me do is upgrade one of my ships by one level, then do a two jump. So I'm gonna turn this three into a four, and then I'm gonna do a one, two jump into here. Nice. All right. And then what does that say at the top? So uh, you can place either one of your yep. of your tokens as an outpost, uh -huh. but your outpost bonus is you can move your rightmost supply cube to supply column A. Nice. So I'm gonna uh, put this one out there food okay and then a, a rightmost so both of them or just one of them just one just one of them okay so my rightmost supply cube is going to come over here so it allows me uh, just a little bit more access to the resources there nice okay and then now it's time to uh produce and i also just want to note uh, that whenever cubes ever go back as supply they always go to the rightmost yes. column so it'll refill it'll refill this soon. one the e yeah but it's it's nice right now so yeah. uh i'm gonna go ahead and take i'll take two or two or yeah two or all right thank you there you go all right. you're welcome all right for me i need more ore, mm -hmm. and i also need to get some of this stuff off so i think this is a good time to research that last level one technology sure yeah so, so you're gonna do you this one right here yeah it's gonna cost you a population here we go can you place this up there for me yeah, please thank you, you. so that get lets me um automate one of the ore production tokens yep. so now i've exposed the second ore symbol and it gets me an ore. nice so a bunch of ore. Okay. uh Production. oh gosh I don't have any people. Yeah, you're like in this teeter-totter. I don't have any people. <laughs> you, your people have been out working the technology. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna take a really bad next turn. Okay, I will do, I'll do ore. Okay, so you're gonna grab two ore. Yeah. Very nice. Two ore, oh, just a ton of ore. Okay, well, I do, control that one up there i can i can colonize it now so i think i will so i'm gonna take this and go over here uh this is gonna be at colonizing that controlled location in the top left corner so i'm gonna colonize it it's gonna cost me my three ore so those go bye bye uh, that's for you uh, the requirement was four on there so um i do have to kick out one of my populations so that's gonna go back to my supply cube storage over here Okay, and, and so then, the minimum um, military power was is four, so you get this ship kicked this back into deep space. Yep, exactly. So this one goes back to this you. This one comes back. And your uh, colonization bonus is from now on, you could pay an extra ore to take an action that's occupied. Okay, so if Monique's in a space that I really want, then I can, I can uh, take that. So I do get to unlock one more of these tokens. Uh, I think and it I doesn't will... have to be the same one that he used previously. Correct. Yeah. So this one has both options on it. So I could put another food or I can put one of these gear symbols. If I do a gear symbol, it's going to unlock this right here and always produce three ore. So I'm going to yeah. go ahead and do that. Okay. That way I have access wow, to three ore. Doing well on your production. And so once again, thank you. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> from now on, you may pay an extra ore to take an action that is occupied. So something like this, I can pay one extra ore to do it. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. And now we get a new yes. system. So this is an easy uh, quarry. A quarry, yeah. And again, these are real systems. Mm -hmm. Sirius like... is the only one I truly know. Cool. <laughs> so this does not have an outpost bonus, but uh, it does take a, a military power of five at least, and it gives you four points at the end of the game. The colonization bonus is you get to turn one supply cube into a population. Then you <clears> may <throat> research an already researched level two technology. So you you'd be able to just take one of these mm. you wouldn't be able to, to research a new one uh, and it also says you could skip prerequisites so this is not wow. going to apply to us now no. because we've both researched all four level ones right right but uh, uh did you produce no not yet so uh well i have nothing <laughs> so i could uh, you know what i'm gonna produce uh population right now so i'm gonna take uh one from the a column here and then one from the b column because it's unlocked now and so that is my turn. I have not completed any achievements and it is your turn. All right, so I am in a tough position. I don't have any population, so I need to spend <laughs> my turn as kind of like a wasted action. I will take the bottom, the bottom action. action, which lets me turn a supply cube into a population. Spoiler, I might be doing the same thing. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it lets me gain an additional uh, ore. ore yeah. And, and then you get to produce. So. Then I get to produce people, which is going to empty my both of my columns. And now I am really in trouble, unless I can open up C. Well, you're you're Where in a good people? you're in a good position. You, your oh. ships are in a good spot. Yeah. You're probably gonna because I have to vacate this spot right here, 
And I okay. already told you, spoiler, that I'm probably going to go there. <laughs> so, uh, because I have no ore. Yeah. And in order to do a uh, level two technology research. In, in order for you to do basically anything except for this, you can do that. Yeah, but I think I need a, well. It's not, that's not bad. Because if you just want ore, you then can, I can turn just a after. person, uh, a supply cube into a person, you can upgrade a ship by, by one level. You sold me. Because then I can just produce this to get three ore. So that's a good call. Thank you. You're welcome. You are so kind. Thank you. <laughs> so I will do... I didn't notice that. I totally forgot I have this access. It's going to be so. a good game. There's that. So I'm going to turn one of my supply cubes. It has to be the leftmost. Okay. To a person. So population. And then I can upgrade one ship by one level, then jump one. So I will go ahead and do that. So it's going to be a level three. And then where would you like to go? Okay. So I'm going to be silly here. I'm going to jump up into the ship yard system over there and so that is a controllable location and now that i control that i can put out one of my tokens so i'm gonna go it's a controllable location it's not a colonizable one correct so yes. this it's not something that obviously you can take back with no. him no. but he can place an outpost token there and if i control that if i build a ship a ship can start there instead of starting out in Seoul. Yeah. so it gives me a little bit more branching so i'm gonna That's put a really good perk i'm gonna put one of these out there if you don't mind okay okay and also if i if i come in here i can take control over it but if david leaves this place completely before i go in there then he retains control right. of the of the system yeah. so it's interesting the way it's a, that yeah this it's an interesting works. little home base there so uh and now i'm gonna go ahead and produce since i have enough people i'm gonna go ahead and produce uh three ore okay. so i got a three three balance that's exactly what you needed that's yeah that's exactly what i needed thank you, you. Needed yeah you're welcome okay so we're gonna colonize we need to colonize something so you're coming here yes i'm going there okay thank you so and i'm ore. going to spend three Three, three or, or, and you kick out a person to your B column. Yep, because it's always the rightmost column that these people turn back into little supply packages. <laughs> and then uh, I get to colonize. Mm -hmm. So I can I have a choice because I, I'm on both of these um, systems, and mm -hmm. they I've met both of their military requirements. Oh, I'm going to do this one. Okay. Okay. So, oops, that, that was, was a two. two, yeah. All right, so this this costs the military power of five, and these both add up to five. So I have three, to take them three both. and two. Yep. Yeah, three and two. So I have to take them both back. They both go in the B column. Mm -hmm. So now I have some supply to make more people, mm -hmm. and so I take this card back. The colonization bonus is I can draw the top card from the technology three deck as my private nice. technology, just for me. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but this does require a food token. Okay, so there nice. you go. Okay, nice. Let me just redraw. For B, and then I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So this is a new system. This is Den 02554700. It's a center of foreign intelligence. Oh wow! Oh. There's no outpost bonus, but the colonization bonus says that you can repeat the immediate bonus of any of the level two technologies that have already been discovered, right. even if you do not have the technology. So like uh, Naveen could do this immediate bonus because he's not in it. Right. If you were to to uh, colonize this planet, that's not bad. It also gives you five points. Military um, power of four. Okay, so I take the top of the of this deck. Did we shuffle these? Uh, yeah, I did. But you can, if you feel like you need to. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> I was just worried. Okay, ready? Yeah. Mercenary. Whoa, mercenary fleet. So this gives me um, two actions. The first action is to colonize with just three ore. Oh my I gosh. no longer have to sacrifice a person. That's your personal. That's your your personal technology. Yes. Oh and then the gosh. second action space says I can spend one ore oh, to like sacrifice that. a person and then convert a person that is a very into nice. a, level, a level four ship and then jump two. Wow. So That is a nice... That is the mercenary fleet. I'm going to put it right here. Personal thing. Wow. Um, happy about that. Ooh. Well, that, that was, was nice. What do I want to do next is the question. You have to produce, right? Yeah, I'm going to produce. But what do I want... To Peeps. produce. I'm going to produce ore. Sure. So two ore. So my two symbols. All right, back to you. Okay, I'm going to take this action over here. Okay. So I'm going to convert a population into a level one ship, and I can build that up here where I already am, like because I said earlier. Controls yeah. it. And then I get to do a jump two. So I'm going to do a double jump, and I'm going to jump into this section right Both? over here. Yep, exactly. Okay, so... You control that, so yep. you place a food, food, the food token. Okay, there you go. So I've unlocked my C level. Right there. Food token. Perfect. There's okay. no out outpost bonus, no. unfortunately, okay. but still, that's pretty good. Yep, that's it for that. And then... Um, How many systems have you colonized? I've colonized two. Oh, that's going to be your third, because one of the advancements 
achievements, sorry, is to colonize four systems. Right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll take ore. I'll take three ore, please. Three ore? Yeah. One, two, three. There Thank you go. Perfect. All right. That's me. So back to me. Mm -hmm. I'm so going to take. I'm going to take this. Um, yeah, your private my one. My private right? action, because yeah. this is going to allow me to colonize again. Otherwise, you would have to do it in like alternate turns, because there's only one spot. If I wasn't blocking it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So my private action lets me spend three ore to to colonize a system card, and I don't have to sacrifice a person for it, so that this population stays safe. So this is the only one that I can colonize. It costs a military power of four, which is what I have showing here, okay. three and a one. So, so I just take these back. One goes into B, one goes into A. Yes. And then I get the bonus. So this says I can jump three, but I cannot enter the newly drawn system card. So I can... <laughs> I so put, you must I stay there my, then, right? Huh? So then do you have to stay there? Actually, I'm supposed to draw the next system card first. And so we have Struve 2398. No outpost bonus, but the colonization bonus is you can automate either one token. Oh, nice. Once, yeah. That's good. Four points out of the game. And now I'm going to place an additional gear token because I colonized this. And my colonization bonus says I can jump three, but I cannot enter the newly drawn system card, which ah. is unfortunate because my only ship is here. And in order for me to go anywhere else, I have to enter the system card. So I just kind of stay in place. Okay. Okay, I'm going to produce ore. So that's two. All right, back to you. Okay, I think it's time to stop focusing on that juice over there and really? focus on this juice over here. Uh, I'm going to okay. do this one right over here, okay? So it's going to be uh, researching a level two technology. So I have okay. quite a few options here. Uh, I can feed into here. Um, I can copycat you over here. But I think I want to go something unique and maybe yeah. see an event that's kind of cool. So it's going to cost me two ore. All right one of my population and i'm going to put my population well, let's go right into this dead center place over here where they both are required so this one feeds into here this one into there so that's this event let's find out what we got here uh oh erratic solar activity tuck this card underneath an uncolonized system card factions must pay one ore for each of their ships that end its jump here wow that system is worth an additional one point if colonized. Take this card along with the system card to indicate this. So what I'm going to have to do is tuck this card into one of these three uh, systems over here. And that system is going to be worth an additional point if it's colonized. If you have to jump into this system with this card, then it's going to cost you an additional ore. Hmm. I'm actually going to, okay. I'm not going to put it here. I'm actually going to put it where I am already. Oh there. yeah, yeah. That's what I thought you were Because it's, it's it. going to be one extra victory point and I'm already, I kind of already got it. Yeah. As of right now. Totally. So I'll just That's... tuck it right there for an extra point, potentially. That is the right thing to do. Thank you. There you go. All right. So now we're going to uh, do this um, this technology. So I can either choose green or blue. It's my choice. I'm going to say green. Okay. I'm going to say green. So let's go green. Oh, double oh, green. There wow. you go. Green. That's blue. Blue. Red. And here's green. So these are my options. These will all go to the bottom. Nice. And let's take a look. So since I said green, I'm, I'm going to read the, the full-on green one first. So this is mass cloning. Autom it's immediately automate one uh, food plus turn one of my supply into a person. That's not bad. And then eventually it's choose up to two, any order, but must be different. It's gain two or, or pay two or to turn two supply into uh, a person or uh, found a level one technology so that option that useless. option's just completely useless this one's called psionics research immediately what we'd get to do is automate one of my food and then the action space that then unlocks is uh pay two or and uh one population to do a level three research oh we do not Ooh. have an ability to research a level three technology yet so i don't like the fact that it's here because that requires this one to be unlocked well what do you mean because this, if it's here, this, oh, this is a solo one. Okay, yes, let's do this one right here. I'm trying to follow the lines. Oh, I so see. this one over here will lead right into this one. If I want to unlock this one, we, I would have to have a technology here to then go into this spot right there. So I will do that one. I'm going to unfortunately not do mass cloning. Okay. So it's going to go tuck to the that's bottom. I know, that's good. Mass yeah. cloning? Can you imagine? <laughs> this that is 240 world? years in the future. So I get to automate one plant. That's, that's nice. Really one soon. food. So that's the hair. Um, and then 
That's it. That's it. That's <laughs> but that's it. now an available yes. action for you. So. Uh, so I do have these three slots open right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a population, a big population surge here. So three human beings coming wow. to me. That's awesome. Okay, that is Very my nice. turn. And okay. now it's you. I, oh, darn. Yours. Okay, so we didn't mention this before, but mm. the second space and some of these actions cost an additional ore. Yeah. But it already costs two ore to discover that technology. That's... All the ore. Or I can wait. You could wait, because you know I'm probably leaving. You have to leave. Well, I could go to the ore spot, but yeah. Yeah, but you would still <laughs> I would still be leaving. Vacate yeah. that. Okay, I'm gonna go here to the narrow beam lasers. Mm -hmm. So these two spots are very similar. The difference is for this spot I would have to pay an extra ore, mm -hmm. but the the cube that I use to turn into a level two ship comes from my supply rather than my population. So for this, I only spend one ore, but I have to use this population to turn it into a level two ship. Okay. And put it here in soul. Start at soul, yeah. And then now I can jump three. You could totally dominate that bottom one that you're already at. Thinking about it, I'm gonna overpay for it, but let's do it. So one, two, and. There's no outpost bonus, but I do get to place an outpost, so I might as well place this food token here so that I can um, produce an additional population. And so that is what I'm going to produce. I'm going to produce population. So I take these mm -hmm. uh, three. Where is this? Here we go. So you only overpay for that one if you don't do an upgrade. If you can turn one of those twos into a three before you colonize it yeah that's true then you would maintain that too that's probably the smarter move right yeah i could kick my because you have your space. own personal colonization here you're in no rush to have to get it done right now that is true yeah true words all right so i've done my production i still we're, we haven't really been checking for these achievements but we just know that we, we know haven't, we haven't uh, yeah we haven't met any of them yet right. but we're getting close we are yeah so um yeah i'm gonna I'm gonna be done with this colonization up there. I don't wanna. I don't. You're get. You're encroaching in that area. So. I'll oh, be, you're gonna colonize. I'm gonna colonize. So it's gonna go here. I have. <laughs> Nowhere a, near your area. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, I'm encroaching. Well, maybe I don't want to. Then, yeah, I do have some. Well, time. I might. I might move into your area. <laughs> you might. I'm, I really might. It's true. Ugh, you're right. You might. Okay, <laughs> so let's just get rid of it. So okay. I'm gonna. So it's gonna cost me three ore. Yes. So here's three of my four. Uh, I have to waste a dude, so you it's gonna come on over here. Jesus. So because it it comes back, it comes back to my rightmost uh, open space. So my supply cube goes there into the E column, mm. uh, and then oh, I wonder if I was supposed to re refill mine too. I may have put it back and not put it back in that column. I say you roll a die if it's I'll a ship it... level two or less. No, I'm just gonna put this one in there now. Okay, just because it's okay. Okay, I don't. <laughs> I, know. I I feel like I, I wasn't tracking it. I really feel like I um, should have done. I that should have done at that at some point. Yeah. But oh well. Uh, okay. So then I put my person back. I paid my thing. So now I'm gonna colonize this one. This one required four. I yep. have exactly that. So all my peeps come back. They come and back. And you get this extra point because of do. this event. So that's nice. So 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 I guess we have to refill the system first. Yes. Uh, so next up is TZ Ar Arieti Arietis? Arietis. Okay. And um, no outpost bonus, but the colonization bonus is you get the number of points at the end of the game equal to all of your technologies in level two and three. Just add them up. Quantity. So like right now I would have two to your two. Like, like that. If you would have two points. Two points, yeah. yeah. Up to seven points, it says. Yeah, max seven. And it does not count private technologies, so mm -hmm. that would not count for me. Okay, so okay. you did you place a token? Yeah, so I need to place a token. The only one is food here, so I'm gonna unlock this this food here. So now the D column is opened up for me. And what is your colonization bonus? So the thing that it says at the bottom here is repeat the immediate bonus of any level two technology, if even if you do not have the technology. So if I can do this one technically, this one or technically that one. So let's take a look. So this one that will let you upgrade a ship by one level I and then jump twice? I don't have a ship to upgrade, oh. so that's just not even possible. Yeah, so we're gonna ignore that one. This lets you create a ship from one of your supply cubes, a level mm -hmm. th three ship from your right, right most, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. And that lets you automate a food token. So would you like to build a ship or automate a food token? You know, I'm gonna build a ship. Okay. So I'm gonna build a ship and then because I have control out there, it gets to get built right over here. Ah, uh, gosh. So I need to out. take the. If I could just enter 
that that area. Stay away, you. <laughs> when Naveen is not there, I can yeah. take it. But and I still have to produce. It's just um, so far away. So to to wrap up my turn, I did my action now. Production. I'm gonna take three ore, please. Okay. There you go. Okay. And uh, now it is your turn. So we have not done another achievement. So your turn. No. Okay, I'm going to go to the supply outpost. Mm -hmm. So that's going to let me um, convert a supply cube into a population. Yep. And then upgrade one ship by one level. So I'm doing that thing nice. that you recommended. Yes. Uh, turning yes. this into a three. Uh -huh. And then I can uh, jump one. So I'm going to jump this out. <laughs> that's okay. it. Okay, yeah. Um, I need ore. So I'm going to produce ore. Two, sure. two ore. Solid. All right, so now I have some resources. Cool. Back to you. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the narrow beam laser. It's going to cost me one ore. Okay. And then I'm going to convert one human into a level two ship, and then I get a jump three. So I'm going to convert it over here, and then I'm going to jump one, two with one left over. And so I'm now taking control of this one over here, able to put out a gear symbol mm -hmm. onto this one. And this one requires five power, military power to be here. All right. Uh, and then now it's time to produce. I think I will produce, I'll produce ore. Can I have three ore? Okay. Yeah. Two, three. There you go. Appreciate it. All right, so back to me. Yep. I'm now realizing that I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Probably should have done something else over here. So, you know what, it has been a while. Since okay. either of us have researched a technology. It's time so to research. Yeah, let's okay. research a level two technology because yeah. I don't have access to a level three at the moment. Mm -hmm. And instead of researching that one, I might as well do I'm gonna zig to the zag. one of my own. Yeah. I mean that is nice. You have access to, mm -hmm. to a level three. To yeah. level three. You know, I'm gonna try to find my my own research spot. Okay. Let's see if I can find one. Where are you going to go? I'm going to go here. To the top. Okay. Yeah. So let's put this. It costs two ore. So here's my two, two ore. ore. Yep. And I'm going to place a population up here. Very top. And let's read this event card. So this is the Black Market Industries. And so this says you gain one ore, then display this event near the achievement cards. Nice. Let's do that. Let's get our ore discount. I get an ore. Um, each faction may, once this game, move one food token or or production token onto this card to increase its production level. This can be done at any time during their turn, but if you do so, you lose two points at the end of the game. Mm. So that's kind of like, a, oh, I just need that one more. Yeah. Put it there, but you lose two so points. So you keep it by end. the achievements over there. Yeah. So I'll just, just put it in that dark part of space right there. There. Yeah, that's fine. Black market industries. Black market oh, industries. Oh, yeah, you're selling to the black market. That's yes. pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so now, now it has to be blue because yes. it's coming off this uh, line. That's that was the point because I think uh, scientific technologies are the ones that have potential research actions. Research, yeah, so yeah, yeah. This is this blue. blue. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, like, like, what do you mean? Uh oh, you're Doesn't looking have... for blue. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now I'm looking oh, for you a want research some combo. spot. Yeah, I see. I was looking for specifically to research level level mm -hmm. three technologies. Mm -hmm. and so I found one, but let's just read the other one first. Sure. So we have biosynaptic network. And this is just an immediate bonus that says I can choose one. I either repeat the immediate bonus of, of a discovered level two technology, even if I don't have that technology, okay. or I can automate one or the other token plus gain two ore. Uh, wow. I don't really want to do that right That's now. That's the biosynaptic network. Okay. Or I can do the human experiments, which lets <laughs> me immediately upgrade up to two ships by one level. Ooh. I don't want to upgrade this to a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's overpay. And it also gives me these two new action spots. So I can either um, sacrifice two population in order to research a level three technology. So that, so that means it requires three total population. Yes. Two to for the sacrifice, one to go onto the space. Correct. Okay. Uh, or I can sacrifice one person in order to convert a population into a level three ship and then mm -hmm. jump two. That's great. Yeah, that's not bad. We're going to do the human experiments. Cool. So my immediate benefit is I can upgrade up to two ships by one level. I'm just going to, I guess I guess yeah, do it. So this is now a level four. Yep. And this is a level three. If I can have them switch spots somehow. <laughs> now I will... Now it's time to produce. Now it's time to produce. I'm going to produce people. Okay. So it's these two. It's showing three, but my A column has been empty. For a while. It makes sense. You need a bunch of people for that human experiment, yeah. which you just unlocked. <laughs> that that's perfect sense. That's the plan. So back to you. 
Okay, well, uh, I think it's time to colonize this thing and, and, oh and wrap it up. So uh, I'm going to come right on back over here. It's going to cost me three ore. So here's half my ore stack. It's going to cost me one person. That person's going to go all the way back to E as a supply queue. Uh, and then we are going to colonize that one right there. I required five to be there. I have exactly five. They all come back. And now I fill up back my column A. I haven't seen column A with stuff. Wow. Yeah. So you can get four. Wow. Yeah, that's four good. people. Yeah. So let's get. Uh, I'm so sorry. I no. Knocked over your supply. My Let me replace the system right. card first. So this is Tao Seti. You can um, Outer Worlds, Outer Worlders Alliance base. So the outpost uh, bonus is you can move your rightmost supply cube to supply column A, just like Naveen did earlier. Mm -hmm. And the colonization bonus is the number of points you earn from this card at the end of the game is the number of your colonized systems plus three, max seven. Whoa, this is so good for you. What was that? I'm sorry. I was, I was <laughs> so focused on doing something else. Okay, but... <laughs> if, you win, if you win this card, uh -huh. you're going to get seven points because it's however many uh, uh, oh, systems you three. colonize yeah. plus three. So. Okay. And that is a maximum number of points. I have no ships out right now, so it is what it is. So we're saying it's mine. So I, I'm saying there's a chance. So this is going to go over here. Okay. Uh, so this is the one that was on it originally. I get to put out another one. It has to be the same type because that's the only one that's there. So I've unlocked this one. Uh, and now what it says is my bonus is I can take one supply and turn it into a human. Then you may uh, discover a level two technology and skip the prerequisites, meaning I can I can discover any level two technology. No, no, no. Uh, that has an I symbol on it. So that means he has to research a level two technology that's already been researched. So you ah, have the okay. option of this one or this one. Well, I like the one that you just exposed. Seeing as the immediate bonus here is upgrade uh, up to two ships by one level, I have no ships out there. So uh, I like what's out there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgo that one. I'm gonna go with this one right over here. Okay. Uh, this is gonna be turning into a human, which then turns into this right over here. And what it does is it allows me to take a box and turn it into, uh, oh, from the rightmost, and turn it into a level three ship. So I will do that. It's gonna go and hang out back over here. Oh my gosh. Here. <laughs> oh, I need to take that spot. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, that's it. And then now I get to produce. So I will produce, I'll produce people. Um, so I get one, two, three people. Nice. And that's me. Oh, and um, now that I've completed this, I've colonized four times. So this is the first time we check for an achievement. Uh, I was able to do it. Yep. So I put this out here, and if you guys can't see, it's it's four points yeah, at the so end. The, the point values decrease depending mm -hmm. on uh, what place you are when you when you put that when in there. So that, yeah. Naveen gets four points. If I were to go there, I get three points. Right. I don't okay. know if I'm going to get to four systems by the end of the game, but we'll see. So are you done? Uh, that is it for me, yes. Okay, so I'm going to go to... Where am I? Uh, you oh, were over there. here researching stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go... Um, I'm going to go up here, if you can please move my toe. Uh, which one is it? The topmost. I'm going to yeah. research a level three technology using my new human experiments nice. technology. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> um, so it doesn't cost any ore to do this, but I do have to sacrifice two population because they are human experiments after all. And C and D. Uh, C and D, yeah. C. Yeah, I just have to fill C. And then you, are, you have to do this one right over here, right? Or I guess you can technically do this one right here because you feel yes, it here. Yes, yes. Yep. So my options of a level three technology are either this one because I have met the prerequisite for it or this one because mm -hmm. the prerequisites are both these two and I've met both. So do you like red or yellow or do you like blue? I that's... can actually also research this yeah, one. Yeah, that's right. This one over here. this is just one long line there. I'm going to do this one. Yeah, sure. Oh, actually, yes. It gives me options. I can do either red or yellow yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see the event first if, if that's what you want to do. No, you have to choose first. Before the event. Uh -huh. oh, okay, I see. Actually, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. It's a little bit, uh, gives me a little bit more options. So I already paid my two people. And so I, I must still add a population here. Yep. And now I'm going to see what this event yes. brings us. Mass enlightenment. Ooh. Wow. So if this is the last round, you discard this event. It's not, so we can continue. Name a technology type slash color. Then reveal cards from the level four technology deck until you find a matching card. Place it above the basic spacefaring box. Mm -hmm, over here, huh? And tuck this card underneath it. Any faction may research this technology using an available um, action that allows you to research a level four technology without prerequisites. 
but it does not count towards an achievement. You place one population to the left of the card as usual. <laughs> so it's, just, it's like an additional uh, level four technology spot, but it does not require any prerequisites. They, score, they scored do... a decent amount of points, these level four ones, so. They do. All right, so. Like, it is what it is. You can't, I have to you choose... can't not do it. <laughs> yeah, so. I have to choose the technology type. Do you want to decide with me? What do we want? What's a cool I have level no idea. four technology? I don't know, commercial? Let's do blue. Okay, blue. I don't know why I'm just choosing blue. Blue so, is uh, scientific, so let's see. It says draw until you find the blue, right? Yep, just one blue. That's all you need. It's red, yellow, green, yellow, red. Wow. Wow, green. Oh, yellow. Where's the blue? There it is. Here we go. Double blue. The technology singularity. Okay. Do you want me to read it? Sure. Technology singularity. From now on, all actions cost one person or one or less for you. At game end, get one point for the number of two and three technologies, not counting private technologies uh, that you got. Mm. There you go. So this is something you would have to be able to unlock this, correct? Yes, you have to research it. There's I don't think there is an available action space mm -mm. right now. So now you have to actually do this research. Ah, yeah. yes. And so that's going to be a level red. three. I'm gonna. It has to be red. It has to be red, yeah. So let's see. There is one. That's one. Nope. Here two. we go. That's two. Okay. So this one goes to the bottom of the deck. And so our options for this level three technology are either the hyperdrive boosters, which gives me an immediate bonus of upgrading three, what? Upgrade three ship levels. You can choose the same ship or any combination oh, of ships. You can just turn a one to four. This or... can't, I only have one more ship Ooh, upgrade available there. That doesn't there. sound good for you right now. Okay. But the action says I can upgrade up to two ships by one level and then jump four. Wow, that's, that's nice. The other one is a planetary scale research, and this allows me to immediately turn one supply cube into a level two ship and then jump two. That's great. Um, and it also gives me an action space that allows me to spend four ore in order to, oh, in order to research a technology. So it says that I can research a technology X, where X is the number of your colonized systems plus one. Oh. So you would be able to research a level three technology. Yeah. You have two colonized systems plus one. So it's been four or so if I can colonize one more, then it'll allow me to, to do a level four. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. Planetary scale research. Sure. So I first build a ship using a supply cube. So a level two ship. So it has to go on soul. Yes, because I still am I'm, you're gonna have that shipyard system for the mm -hmm. whole game, I swear. <laughs> uh and that oh, and then I can jump two. Do I care that this has the four and that's the three? <laughs> You can swap them. I can swap them. You can them. swap them. I can, or I can get this ship all the way to deep space. Okay, I'm going to go one, two. Okay. Let's yeah, get and some other out. systems going. Yeah, so now you get to put out, you have control of that one. Yes, I do have control of this one. So I put out a gear. Nice. That's what it that's requires. Fair, that's good. There's no outpost bonus. But the thing that's nice about this is if I decide to just bite the bullet and colonize it with a level four ship, it'll kick this out for me. Free. So it'll get a, a one jump, you know, free, yeah. closer to the other stuff. So. What would be ideal is if you can turn that two into a three, yes. then the four gets and boosted. Because you have this permanent, you know, colonization, you, you can kind of sit on your laurels there. All right, that's, and now you still have to produce. That was a long turn. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm going to produce ore, three ore. One, two, three. All right, back to you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Go right over here, the narrow beam lasers over here. So I'm gonna turn one ore and okay. one humanoid into a level two. Population. Uh, over there. And then I get uh, up to three. three jumps. So we're gonna go into this one that you were mentioning earlier. Oh, okay. Right there. Ooh, I thought you were gonna try to take my system. Uh, no, well, this one's a max seven points. Yeah, so, yeah. And, that and, is you know, nice. And then you're over there dealing with that over there, so. <laughs> We can, um, we you can, can be outpost civil. bonus here. Okay, so Oops. I'll go ahead and put uh, food out there. Okay. Okay. So it says you can move your rightmost supply cube uh, yep. to your supply column A. Okay, perfect. So I'll put this one right over here. So that allows you to a. produce that mm -hmm. that population. Perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, but yeah, let's produce population. So one, two, three, four. So this will become a human. Wow. This will go human. It's interesting because the more systems you colonize, the less of these tokens that you have to automate. I apologize. I'm not going to do human human. I'm going to do a coal. Oh, coal. or? I'm sorry. Yeah, or, <laughs> yes, or. It looks like coal. It looks like coal. It feels so like coal. So four. It's the color of coal. One, two, three, four. All right, there you go. Yeah. It is getting closer. 
to Christmas, <laughs> after all. Lump of coal, huh? All right, so back to me? Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to colonize. Enough is enough. Yeah. I think I've been sitting on that for too long. I actually don't really know how long I've been sitting <laughs> on it for. It felt like a long time. It felt like a long time. So three Get or... Some power moves. And uh, it's, I'm using my, my personal totally. uh, technology here. So it's three or to do a col colonization action yep. without having to sacrifice any of my population. That's really nice. So I'm doing this one because it's a, mi a minimum military power of three. And this is a three ship. So it's going to go back into my supply. And then we're going to refill this. Mm -hmm. So this is Luton wow, Star. Wow, look at that. We're at seven points. It's a luxury system, by mm. the way. Uh, you may not enter this system unless you have researched at least two level three technologies. Which we have not done. So that's neither of us. It's worth seven points, but there is no colonization effect. Okay. That's a good one to come out uh, this late in the game. Yeah, yeah, that is a good one. Okay, so this is going to go over here with my... Don't forget to put another token on it. And it must be a an ore producing one. And so this is going to... It doesn't give me any like immediate benefits. It's just the number of points that I earned for this is... However many level two and three technologies you have. One, two, three, four right now. So far, so four, four points. points. Yeah, that's not bad. That's cool. not bad. And by the way, putting that second token on these, um, when you colonize, it's co it's considered exploiting in this game. That's what it's called, exploiting. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're exploiting that. that that's region. clever. Yeah, clever. That's terrible, but it's clever. Okay. Thematically clever. So I'm going to produce, and where did I want to go next? I'm going to produce a person. Okay. Just one person here like that all right so back to you okay so over here let me see what does this require this required only three over here so that's going to be kicked out oh yeah to the deep space oh are you gonna colonize another one well maybe well you said that one's worth seven which is the max because i have one two three four plus three to that so seven which is the max that card can do so uh, I think I'll hold off though on doing it right now um i have this right here i can i can uh discover a level three Technology, so I think I'm gonna do that. Where's okay. my okay? So I'm gonna go here. It's gonna cost me two ore. Here's two ore. It's gonna cost me one person that's gonna go back to my rightmost supply, and then one person to actually go here. So um, the only one I can do is this one right here, a straight line, because I don't have this one to go into this one. So yeah. I'm gonna do this. Event. This technology says both right both. there. It requires mm -hmm. both this and, and this as a prerequisite. Right. So this one is this one. Okay. okay. Okay, we have an event. All right, research grant. You may tuck this card under an undiscovered technology slot, a level two or three, except the one you are researching, meaning currently researching. I can't tuck it here. <laughs> okay, uh, or discard this event. Every faction who later researches that technology gains one ore immediately that turn, and at the end of the game gains one point. So, um, you don't. You can also discard it. It's up to you. I could discard it. Uh, <laughs> I, we, we're all in the same kind of areas. I can go into here. So you know, if I tuck it here, I can get the point. But you're you're already there. So, so if, later, if later research. research wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So if I tuck it here, she under an undiscovered technology. Uh, slot. Undiscovered technology. I was like, wait, slot. that's not fair. It's like, whoa, whoa. You know what? I could just put it here and then just have a little mini race. A race. Okay, it's on. You can do one of the level twos also if you want. I could. Although that, I'm going next. <laughs> or I can just discard it. It says, or discard the event. You know what? I'm, I'm discarding the event. Oh, boring. It's out. <laughs> All right. I don't want the responsibility. So because this is going to this side, it yeah. has to be blue over here. So let's find some blue. And that is a scientific. scientific. Blue is scientific. Definitely not. <laughs> this is blue. Green, blue. What's that? Red, blue. Perfect. Okay, so it's red. I like the hybrid ones. Yeah, There's the a, hybrid ones are... A little bit of a, of a mix there. Yeah, that is cool. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Cerebral implants. Ooh. It's uh, There's no immediate bonus, but it's turn one of your supply boxes into a person, then choose one below. Uh, turn three coal in to... <laughs> three ore. Three ore. I'm so sorry. To discover level two Dis technology. Level two. Or five to discover level three. It's expensive. It is expensive versus that, but it's a double action, which is nice. Yeah. This one is deep space mega structures. Okay, so this one is there's there's an immediate bonus of turning one supply into a level three uh, ship into deep space, then get a one jump. This one uh, then opens up a space which you can turn in four ore to turn in one supply into a 
two level aircraft again into deep space, then you can research a level three technology. Wow, this is That's a really good card. an and intense also, one. I think they're hyperspace craft. Hyperspace craft, sorry, <laughs> oh, that's Harry. Um, <laughs> I don't think you can fly aircraft into space. This is a Boeing 747 going that's, into space. Okay, we'll take it. Yeah, that's a good card. That's a I good card. I was gonna say, I don't know what I this like it. thinking business is. And then there's an immediate, because yes, this one didn't have an immediate. That one does. So I can turn a level one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can turn a supply. A level one supply cube. There's just so much icons. Ah, so okay. into a level three ship. Level three ship. And it goes straight into deep space. And I get a jump. Wow. So I will jump here. That's a fantastic card. So, okay. So there's some things to unpack there. So. Oh, okay. Uh, you. Am I allowed to jump there? No. Okay. You cannot enter this system unless you have at least two uh, level three technologies. So you. back to space. Back space. to space. Where, where are you going to go? Uh, okay. I'll just hang out over Protect here. your eye. Yeah, I'll just hang out over there. Protect your uh, outpost over yeah, there. Yeah, since I can't, because I have to have uh, two level threes in order to go into that spot. Right. Uh, okay. Was there anything else I was supposed to do? Nope. Just produce. Just produce, huh? Okay. I'm going to produce uh, people. All right. Since I'm short on humans. So you get three? One, two, three, yep. Nice. All right. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back over here to research a level three technology. So my space lets me uh, use population cubes. So this is gonna cost me a sacrifice of two population cubes. So let's put them back in their columns, B and C. And then with me, this third population cube, I now must research the level three technology, which I think I'm going to go over here. So, and I can do this because I have both mm -hmm. of these technologies. Yep. So I'm going there. I'm going to read this event. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is the Museum of Retired Spacecraft. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so this Maybe the this... Boeing 747s in there. Maybe. Yeah. No, no, no. Spacecraft. Space. Okay. So this says display this event you know near the thing. achievements. And in turn order, starting with the faction to my left, so Naveen gets to go first, each faction may move one of their ships to this card. It will be out of the game. You update the system's control after. At the end of the game, each faction gains a number of points equal to the power of their ship. Wow. So if I put my level three ship that's doing nothing, I can just get three points? Mm-hmm. Mm. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, I'll do it for three points. You gonna do it? <laughs> yeah, I just put it, yeah. put it right there. So can you take my three and just put it? Yeah, so that'll be worth three points at the end of the game. Yes. Sweet. Oh my gosh, do I want to do this? All right, let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to place not, it's, this, it's not this ship here. So it's going to be four points at the end of the game. So it's leaving my, my level two ship there, but that's okay. You still have control. So that was just the event. Now just we're the going event. to do the actual technology. So you have a red or yellow. Yellow is commercial, which helps you with colonization, movements, flexible action. So it seems like a jack of all trades kind of thing. Yeah, let's go with yellow. yellow. There's been a lot of red. There has the been a lot board. of red, yeah. We're a little bit aggressive this game, I think. Mm. So let's go. Oh, there we go. Yellow and yellow. Perfect. So we have... Uh, Ooh. Okay, let's that see. That sounds cool. We have wormhole technology. So immediately I get to, to transform a supply cube into a level two ship and gain one ore. And then I can jump two to any locations. Uh, from now on, your ships only need one jump to travel anywhere except when leaving solar deep space. <laughs> I Where mean, that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that makes more sense in a in a uh, bigger player count. When you use the other side, there's more things going on. But not bad. This is not bad. It's not I, bad. I can take your shipyard system you, with this you card. You could do that. All right, let's see what the next one is. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is the quantum data exchange. And so with this, I can immediately automate one ore production token and gain two ore. And it also gives me this action spot that says I can copy any research type action even if I do not have the technology. And you get to automate. That's but it has nice. to be a research type action. Automatically, yeah, eh, that's not that great. Let's do this one. Okay. So we're gonna do the, do the wormhole technology. Is it time for me to lose the stronghold? It is time. Oh, take it. You. Okay. So I'm gonna take this supply cube, turn it into a level two ship, and I gain one ore. So this goes into soul, because it still has to go into soul. Okay, so now I can jump two of my ships to any locations. Uh, so I'm going to move this here and I'm just going to move, I mean, it's the same thing, but I could move that one all the way over here mm -hmm. because that allowed me to just jump there. And because Naveen has left this system and I now t uh, took control of it, he puts his outpost back. I'll take it back. And I place one of mine and it can be either food or food or gear. Let's go with food. Place that right there. 
And then that's it for my action. I must, I must now produce. So I'm going to produce a my one person. Oh gosh, I need some population. Mm -hmm. All right, that's me. So back to you. Okay, I'm gonna go to this new technology I just did right here. So it's gonna cost me four ore. I'm gonna try to do this whole thing right here. So it's gonna cost me four ore, which is okay. exactly what I have. Yes, four ore. There you go. And now I take a supply cube and I turn it into a level two ship and I place it in deep space. Then I can research um, a technology. So a level three, a level three technology, which I think this is, oh no, I can do this one. No, I can't do that one yet. You can do this one or this one. Mm -hmm. Both of the ones that I've, that I researched. I'll do this one right over here. Okay. Yep. So this is going to go over here. Mm hmm. And then what it allows me to do is take one of those boxes and turn it into a level two and then jump to. So because I don't control this anymore, mm -hmm. this has to be in Seoul. So it has to go here. Yep. So then I get a, a two jump. So I'll jump, I guess I'll do this. One, two, just for some little control right over there. <gasps> What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing, you entered uh -oh, this. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just I have to get out of Seoul. So, so, so one, two. Scary. And then I will, what does that say up there? Because now I have two, I have two level three technologies that I've researched. So There's no bonus. That's, that's all. Oh, it's just saying that, I'm allowed is, to be there now. That's the requirement for entering. Okay. It. Then I will put, um, let's put this thing out there. Okay. Okay. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. So now. What um, are you going to produce? Well, I think I'm going to produce people here because I'm going to create an achievement if I do this. <gasps> So these what? two people are going to become humanoids. And now I've done my production. Now we're going to look at the achievements. This one says post-humanist. Have two or fewer supply left in supply. So I only have one left here. Oh my gosh. Naveen. So we have unlocked this achievement, which I think is worth three points. But remember, the end game gets triggered when three tokens total are out. So now we have two tokens. Okay. we got to think about this now. So I control the timer now, it looks like. Yeah, so uh, my, basically to, for me to end the game, I have to get to a level four, which cannot be this one, correct? No, I think this this cannot end the game, this one right here that we put out here. This cannot end the game. No, it's not. Yeah, it doesn't count towards the achievements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, or I can uh, research three more of these. So, woo, it got uh, stressful all of a sudden. Mm. Okay, I'm going to go over here to the supply outpost. Okay. I don't really want to sacrifice any of my resources. So I get to take this supply cube, turn it into a population, True. and then upgrade one of my ships by one level. Might as well nice. do this one. Yeah. It's already Protect here. Spot. Yeah. Makes sense. And then and then I can jump one. There's not really a point in jumping at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is it a no-go? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm just going to leave them where they are. There's really no no purpose in, in jumping. Okay. Uh, so this is like the one exception. Um, we were saying earlier that all actions are sort of mandato mandatory. Right. So if it is a multi-step action, I can forfeit the jump. Yes. Jump is the one thing you can be like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can jump up to whatever that number is. But if it is an action spot that only allows you to jump, I can't just like block that spot and not jump. Yeah. So. You can't like take jump four and be like, no, I'm not jumping. Right. So, so I'm going to sacrifice that jump. And then I'm going to produce ore. So three ore. And that's me. Your turn. Um, well, I have no ore. Everything costs ore to do something. <laughs> so I might actually do the jump four. Oh, okay. And bail on that spot and then just hang out over there. So <laughs> I guess. Really? Just so I can accumulate ore to then do something on the next turn. So I will do that. Um, I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to jump four. I'm going to just jump two, really. Because it's going to go one, two, and hang out in here. Okay. Um, and then now I need some ore. So I'm going to produce ore. One, two, three, four, please. Perfect. One, two, three, four. Four. There you go. Okay, perfect. And that that back one. to me. Yep. All right. I'm going to do something that is probably going to trigger the end of the game. So I'm going to go here to the planetary scale research. And so this lets me spend four ore, two, one, two, three, four, in order to do a research of a technology that's whatever level as the number of, of uh, systems I've colonized plus one. Mm, so, so you're going to do a level four? Yeah, I'm going to do a level four. <laughs> so you're going to trigger it. All that talk just to say I'm doing a level four. Wow. So I can do a level four technology because I have, ac I have uh, researched both of these 
And okay. this level four technology requires both. So if you trigger this, then you will, I will only have one more turn and you will have one more turn after that. Yes. Because I was first player. So you're ending the round on this one. Yes. And you'll have one more turn. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I must choose either a blue or yellow. I'm not too good on automation. That's the only thing. So I fear that it's going to be like, get double your automation points. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Let's go with yellow. I have no idea what this is going to bring. Yellow is a kind of jack of all trades here. So it says yeah. commercial. So, oh, that's blue. This is blue, green. Here Here's we go. Yellow. Blue, yellow. Red, red. Here you go. Yellow, green. Okay. So just think of it as your last action. You're ideally going to be taking. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all immediate. Uh, they're so, all immediate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're not actual action spots, mm -hmm. these cards. So the first one is Android Independence. So immediately it lets me take two of my supply cubes from my rightmost two, so the ones in column E, and turn them into population. And it says from now on, you require two fewer military power to colonize any system. At the, mm -hmm. in, at the end of the game, this is six points. The other one is a parallel universe generator, which lets me repeat the immediate bonus of any of the level three discovered technologies, even if I don't have it. Okay. And at the end of the game, I double the points of my achievements. What achievements am I going to have? Ooh, yeah. Just, well, just one of them. Max seven. Seven's better than six. It's true. Okay, I'm going to do the... <laughs> I'm doing the parallel universe... If you universe can get to seven, seven's better than six. Generator. So I'm going to place my, my population cube there. Sorry, I forgot to do that. And so it's going to immediately repeat... Let me repeat the immediate bonus of one of these cards. So I can either make a level two ship gain an ore and jump to to any location okay i'm going to repeat the immediate bonus of the world wormhole technology okay so i create a level two spaceship from my supply cube so now you can create it in the top one or the bottom one i'm going to create it in seoul because yeah. at the end of the game whoever has the most military power in seoul and deep space which are the non-controllable um areas then they get each the get one point yeah, yeah one, one point, point. So I also gain an ore, nice. and I can jump two to any location. I'm just going to jump this ship into deep space because uh, since I left this, because Naveen's not there, I still control that uh, that system. Yep. So that was that was that that was that. So now I produce, and production for me is kind of a strange thing. <laughs> I don't. I get it has to be people. Ore. So I go ore. Yeah, it has to be ore. And then now I have achieved my first achievement. It's good. I researched my first uh, level four technology. Yes. So I do get that achievement. So that triggers the end game. Three tokens are out in a two player game. In a two player game, yes. Yep. Three tokens are out. And so you typically finish the round, but because Naveen started first, then so the round is finished. The round is finished. We play one more. One more round, yeah. So you get one last action. What okay. is it going to be? I'm just going to take those seven points. So I'll Smart. put that over there. This is going to cost three or uh, one human to be discarded back. And it goes all the way back to E over here. And then um, I'm going to satisfy this one right here. That one required how much? Over oh, there? they're Five. both seven points. This is seven points also. So this one's going to be this. Okay. And then it's going to kick me out a two into deep space over here. <gasps> And then this is gonna come back and put that over here. Oh, I totally, I didn't see that, that, <laughs> that we're gonna tie there. Well, you still have one more action. I do. So uh, this one is, it's basically end game points. Number of colonized systems plus three. So it's up to seven points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven max. Yeah, so, seven yeah, max, so I can't seven. go to eight. So that's gonna go there. Uh, I'm gonna exploit with, uh, let's just put food out there. And then um, I will technically produce. Doesn't really matter Doesn't at really this matter. point because um, your resources aren't worth anything. At the I'll end just of the produce game. and just call these this over here. Okay, that's it. We I'm have lots of humans. That nobody researched the the technological singularity. It was too much work. From now well on, all actions. I didn't have access. Oh. Uh, I, I mean, technically, I had this one right here, but it doesn't right. it doesn't score, you know, as it much does. as seven points. Yeah. Seven points, you know, is more for me. All right. So for me, for my last turn of the game, I am just going to colonize because that'll at least get me one more achievement. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to colonize using my mercenary fleet private uh, technology here. So it just costs me three four, four yep. and it's going to be the only one that I can colonize. So technically B should have come out. But, oh, yeah. But, you know. Uh, yeah. DX can cree. That's Sure. All right. So I'm going to colonize this one. And 
Yeah, I'm just not going to put it on another yeah, it's, system. It's, yeah, it's a waste it's of time. Yeah. <laughs> so this goes back, which is also not that necessary. And I put out one of these cubes. Again, also not necessary. And it lets me, oh, it lets me automate, though, as my as my uh, colonization bonus. So that is... That's an extra point. That is necessary. An extra point. So I'm going to automate that. Sure. And then I would technically produce, but it's not going to get me anything. Same difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's it. That's the, the game. Yeah, that's it. It's over. So there's no score sheet. I'm just going to get a piece of paper. Yep. All right. So I have, who started the game? You did? I did, yep. First okay, part. so M and M. First things first is we get points for all of the technologies that we've researched. Okay. One point for level one, two for level two, three for level three, and sure. then the level four is variable. First player, so, you want to go first? Yep, go for it. Okay, so I have all four of these, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen for me. Okay. And then I have those four, four as well. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Plus, this says I can double the points of my achievements, and it looks like... Oh, I didn't put my, my yes, achievement token Yes, that's right. That's why you did that. Yep. There you go. So it looks like I have seven points. Yep. So maximum seven. Seven. Yep. So what would you say? 16 plus seven? 16 plus seven, yep. So 23. Technically, if I we also had a card that allowed me to score for my private... Um, we don't. technology then mm -hmm. we would but but this doesn't actually score me any points so then after that we score for automation tracks okay i got two points i have two points as well okay. and then uh for your colonized systems so all of the points at the bottom left hand corner okay so i have five plus six it's 11 uh plus another five plus one because of this so this is uh 17, 17 18 19 20 21 21 plus this was seven we said so, yeah, so it's gonna 28? be 2018 yep. okay oh boy so I have four of them, and this is five plus four is nine plus two is eleven plus the number of my level two and three technologies. One, plus two, three, five. four, five. Plus five, yeah. So sixteen? Mm-hmm. Oh no, not looking good. And then we get one point each for any of our outposts still left on the board. Doesn't matter if they're on cards or if, if they're on the uncolonizable uh, systems. So we're talking about the control tokens. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I have one, you have one. Yep. We also get one point for controlling the uncontrollable areas. <laughs> yes. So it's just soul and deep space. Yeah. yeah. So soul, soul and deep space. Because we tied, we both get the point, and then okay. I get a point for soul. So two and one for you. So, yeah. Uh, we now also score any of these um, event cards that give us any end game points. This one, had we taken up on their offer, would have docked us two points, but neither of us did this. So the Museum of Retired Spacecraft, Naveen gets three points because he has a level three ship there, and I get four for my level four ship. And then finally, we score our achievements. So it looks like Naveen has three plus four, seven. I think we tied here. Yes, yeah, seven. Yeah, seven. we both have seven. Seven, seven. Okay. All right, and that's everything. So yep. we're going to do a little bit of math, and then we'll see. All right, so scores are in, yeah. and it's looking like... <clears throat> Naveen with 58, 58 and Monique with 55. 55, I so, got one. Naveen is victorious ah, today. The space opera. <laughs> Good job, Bob. How you feeling? I won one. Yay! I did it. <laughs> that was uh, Beyond the Sun. We've beyond traveled the sun. beyond the sun. Yes. We've colonized a ton of systems. How do you feel about that? Yeah, that was that was cool. Um, <laughs> that uh, was cool. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was a very balanced score towards the end there. Yeah. Um, ending the game there for you really brought you up about fourteen points at the end there. It had to stop. That yeah. I felt like Naveen was just colonizing so many systems. Yeah. The game needed to end. Because I was gonna I was gonna try to gear up to colonize that one for another seven. So that was yeah that was good. Cool. Very nice. All right, so we just finished our two-player playthrough of Beyond the Sun. This is the newest release from Rio Grande Games. Came out Essence Field 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and a newer designer, Dennis Chan. I don't know any other games that he's done. I try to look him up on BGG. And, he's uh, a, he has a physics degree. Yeah, physics and, degree. And uh, I believe he's a software engineer. Yeah, so I can see him kind of putting this all together. This, is, yeah. this takes a certain type of brain right, to, yeah, to kind of exactly. make this lattice of information and data. Um, How do you feel about the game? This game is really interesting. It is interesting. Very, yeah. very, uh, very interesting. I heard about this game, that it was coming out, but I really didn't know what to expect. You know, yeah. there are a lot of space-themed games or space operas. There's all, all sorts of stuff in the space genre the of space, board gaming. Yeah. And this is different. This is quite different. How about you? Yeah. Um, wow. I, I, I really like this one. It's, it's really, really <laughs> good. Uh, I remember the first time you took it out and laid it out on the table, I kind of was like... 
these boards kind of look like they're from like 1984 or something yeah. like that. Like what's going on over Maybe here? Maybe you had a very bad first impression. Just, just the <laughs> table presence alone was just like, okay, there's just a couple cards laid out on this huge board. That board seems way too big for just a couple cards. Actually, you, you didn't have a bad first impression. You were just very curious. It was more yeah. like a, what could this game possibly be? Yes, exactly. <laughs> With just like cards. It looks kind of like, a, you know, when you're solving a crime and you put like the cards yeah. on the... The, the brain map. <laughs> the, yeah, uh-huh. It looked kind of like that. And it's I, I kind of had that, that idea too. Like this thing, there's like really very little graphics on it or in the color, there's no color on some of these things, but... Yeah. Um, so let's start with theme actually. Sure, yeah. What are your thoughts on the theme? It is spacefaring, but in a very different way. It is actually right? very thematic. It is a thematic game. Um, you are researching technology so you can progress your company and the human race uh, <laughs> far beyond the sun. You know, you're leaving Seoul, which is uh, Earth and uh, going to different distant planets uh, and different systems and colonizing, exploiting things over there. So it is it is a fairly thematic game. Doing as humans do. Doing as humans do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is very th fairly thematic, I agree. Um, I really, really like that, that a lot of it is based off of our actual universe and like the star systems that you can mm -hmm. see from from earth mm -hmm. so i thought that was super cool but i agree it's it's an interesting take on a space theme it's not mm -hmm. your your typical it's not a space battle space battle like yeah. yeah what about in terms of player count and very vari and variability now we we must admit that we have not been able to try this game with more than two players mm -hmm. uh it's just not happening right now yeah but i really wish that we can or like i really want to i really want yeah. to play this at higher player counts because i feel like it's going to be different uh, the way that you discover technologies, you're, it's going to be a lot harder for you to discover a fresh technology, to mm -hmm. be able to choose it on your own because there are more people. The board uh, does not change. The board, the board itself doesn't change. This Only one. the exploration board does. The yeah. exploration board does, which mm -hmm. is also interesting because it will give you more locations to travel to and also just more people. You know, whenever there's kind of any kind of like area control aspect to a game, it's, it's a lot more interesting. Well, with more with people. three plus, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. So I, I would really love to see how that, how the dance between the two kind of works out with more than two players. Yeah, because there's definitely a, like a, a, in this game, there's definitely like two major things going on. You mm -hmm. got your technologies, and you got your um, exploration board. So when it's just, if I'm going hard this, you're probably going to go hard that. But what yeah. happens when you ter put in a third or a fourth player in there? It's kind of throwing the things off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, in a two-player game, it, it it almost feels like it's probably a little bit more intense that way because it's like a true space race, yes, right? It's yeah. kind of like you, you can see how far your opponent has progressed in the technology track and it's either you or them. Right. So it's exactly what you said. If you're heavy colonizing, then I'm going to try to research ahead of you and vice yeah. versa. I, I feel like even though in a two-player game, you got to go the colonization route because when you go in control areas, you take these tokens off and this is another way if not yeah. in the technology sphere you got to do it through automation and if you're not able to pull automation cards then your best bet is to go back to that exploration board to try to drop these tokens off so not only that those produce better those mm -hmm. system cards are worth so many points like there are so many different ways to earn points in this game mm -hmm. and you're kind of grabbing at them right yep. like you have to get a level four technology card in order for one of them to be like six points yeah mm -hmm. and so in order for you to get a level four technology card you have to climb up the entire yes. tree but whereas, by climbing up, you're, you're earning points as you climb up because yeah, one, two, three. Up that's there. true. Yeah. But whereas in the in the exploration board, you colonize one system and it's six points. You want to be colonizing those systems, but you want to be doing them in a smart way in order to to really make use of those bonuses mm -hmm. so that the bonuses can get you to the next best thing. Yeah. So that is very, very interesting. That that whole uh, that, that teeter totter balance between the two boards. Mm -hmm. We have a, a visitor uh, in terms of variability and replayability, I suppose. That is the beauty of this game. Mm -hmm. Like that is literally one of the selling points of the game. The fact that every time you play, the types of technologies that you research and the decisions that players make in order to progress up that tree will be different. Right. So yeah. no two games, or like it'll be very difficult for you to get a game played mm -hmm. back to back that's identical, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, technology cards per, uh, this is just the level twos that we didn't see. Mm -hmm. um, there's also 10 events in the uh, level two and level three technologies each. 
So um, four of them weren't even in the game. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot of different interaction, the way the cards will come out. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You also have more achievements because you only play with four of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also have uh, advanced boards. So we have we do have the expert level boards that are asymmetric. Yep. We haven't played with them yet. Not yet, yeah. We want to. It's just that we kind of wanted to play this this version of it um, a few more times in order to film it. Yep, exactly. So, yeah. But it does sound uh, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And even speaking on just the game that we played, we didn't even unlock these guilds. Yeah, so, I was surprised that that didn't show up. Yeah, so that just goes to show how, you know, how different each experience can be. These guilds, by the way, are just these kind of layover tiles. Sometimes you'll get an event card that says, unlock, unlock one of the tier one guilds, and then you get to choose which one to unlock for everybody to use. Yes, yeah, it just opens up more action spaces. Yeah, it, it namely, it opens up like the ability to research on a level three technology uh, in case maybe you don't have one on the board right and then going into mechanics so this game is really really interesting mm -hmm. interesting is the word that keeps coming to my mind yeah. because that's that's good what way. it is like that in a good way yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah i really enjoy it um i do feel like it runs a little bit long it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it drags it's more like when i finished the game i thought okay that might have been a little bit too long yeah, that but, might have went an extra 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, but like in the moment, you're definitely engaged. It's definitely, your turns just flow. You know, you take yep. an action, you produce next person, right? Yeah. It just kind of goes and goes and goes. The turns don't drag, I will say that. Yeah, that's yeah. good. It's interesting because all of the actions that you can take on the cards, they're all the same types of actions. They're just kind of like reworked in a lot of different ways yeah. and, and, and placed onto different cards. So I really, really, I think that is so cool about this game. The fact that the players are the ones who are dictating the action the spots, action spots mm -hmm. that are going to be available but yes you yeah. have to be in that technology in order for you to use the action spot mm -hmm. so naveen may be unlocking these action spots in areas of the board that i can't reach right. and i'd think like oh gosh that is an amazing technology i, I need follow, to get there my company wants to follow in that technology exactly yeah. but now i must now you know go up that part of the tree in order to get there mm -hmm. so it, it's so it's so interesting the way yeah. that this game or works. The, the exact opposite like oh monique put that one out there that one i, I don't really see myself wanting to use that mm -hmm. i'm going to take a chance on opening up a new event in a new uh, action spot basically right yeah. and the way that the resources work it's almost like an ebb and flow like you're dealing with having a lot of supply cubes in order to make things, right? Mm -hmm. Your supply cubes serve both as population and as ships. Right. But also if you make too many of these things and try to colonize the entire <laughs> <laughs> yeah. space, then you're gonna run out of supply cubes yep. for you to produce more people. Right. So it's, it's a really interesting um, push-pull there that you have to manage in yeah. terms of your resources. Yeah, I like the way that the production is where you have to clear off the columns. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then when you when you reset them, they go all the way back to the far right. So yeah. then it's like you can't just constantly get it. So if you only have A and B unlocked and A and B are naked or completely empty, you get kind of like this and like, how do I get this? I need this other one to get unlocked. And I love the fact that the control tokens are not yours until you bring it home with the colonization. So they are up for grabs for somebody else to put it right back in and ruin your whole plan there. Yes. So that is that is very, very interesting. With the technology board, it's also really important that you uh, study the lines closely mm -hmm. because sometimes they can be a little bit confusing. Yeah. Like uh, I, there was definitely in the last game that we played, I thought I had researched the technology enough to research a future technology. I, it happened that, to me mentally in this game, like where I said I was, I was going to do that. And I was like, oh, actually, never mind. I'm not doing that. Yeah. yeah. So just know the board really well. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the events. I think the events are fun. Yeah. They, they kind of tap into that like goodie box part of your, your brain that like I can either research a technology that's already been researched or I can do a new one. Right, right, <laughs> and right. And see what that event is. Mm -hmm. Because you never know what you're going to get. There are so many things. You might fall into something lucky or something that just kind of helps everybody. Right. But either way, it's a nice way of getting to dictate what type of technology is going to go there. Yeah. And finally, the exploration board. Mm -hmm. This board, huh, it, it's frustrating, uh -huh. <laughs> but it's very fair. Yeah, it's very well designed. It's very well designed. Yeah. You know, we were playing it wrong uh, mm -hmm. the first couple times we played, and that made it more frustrating. So the way that we played it was so that you can, at the, the northernmost uh, shipyard system, we were building ships directly into that yes. system and also not realizing that you can... Control you can it. control it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we were doing two things wrong. We were not only not realizing you can control it, but you were building ships in there. So it was so much easier to get to those B level mm -hmm. cards. Um, so then it was kind of like somebody was just king of the castle. They would just yeah. produce, spam it, hang out, 
but that's how we played wrong. So yeah. I don't want to go down that path too much. <laughs> that but is not the right way. Playing it the right way, this is a very, very, very well designed board. Yes. You relinquish control of that area, right. basically. And so that allows other people to come in and, and immediately go into whatever the next uh, system is. Yeah. Like if you're hanging out in deep space and you see that, okay, Naveen, he got his five and now those get stripped off the board. Now my ships can just slip mm -hmm. into that, whatever that new card is, that, that's really, really fair. Yeah. It's a very fair way and to do it. It's and not, it's not bad. It's not bad in a two-player game. The area control is totally fine. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes area control can be very obnoxious, but it's, it's not. It's, no. it's, it's, very, it's very fair. Mm -hmm. It's a w very well-designed design, exploration board. Yeah. So anyway, th that is Beyond the Sun. It's a very interesting design. It's something that, you know, I feel like I haven't explored all of it. You know, we played this game already a few times, mm -hmm. and I feel like every time we play it, it's always a different experience, and it always leaves me feeling like, okay, I'm going to play it again and then do it this way. Or like, you know, it just makes me want to keep on playing it over and over and over, and over again yeah. to try to discover more about this game. I know we've definitely felt like we've played this a handful of times now, and I feel like I've gotten a lot better at this game uh, yeah, since yeah. the start. Definitely yeah. our understanding of it yeah. is, has definitely grown. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, for me, I think this is a fantastic game. Yeah, really good. Um, it's probably the most interesting game I've played all year. Sure, and, yeah. And interesting uh -huh. for me is a positive thing. Yeah. I definitely really enjoy this game, um, but very interesting. <laughs> Most interesting game of the year. What are your thoughts? I really like this one. This, one, this one's probably up there with one of my favorite games of the year, for sure. Mm. Um, this was an Essen release, and we did do a video that was our top five each, so technically a top ten. And this was one that I wanted to probably put on there, but I didn't know too much about it. Um, and there were just five other games. Knowing what I know about this one, like I, I definitely slept on it a little bit. This one was really, really, really good. Yeah. yeah. So if, you, if you're intrigued by anything that you saw today, try it. Definitely try it yeah. because uh, it's, it's quite the experience, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that is Beyond the Sun from Rio Grande Games. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you enjoy content like this, would like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Bye.